like to call the order the City of Glen Ellen City Council Workshop. It is September 7th, 2022. It is now 5.35 p.m. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, you have bestowed on this city and its people. We are grateful for the time and the place that we live in. We are grateful for the wisdom that you've given to our leaders, and we ask that you bless this council and staff to lead us forward. Amen. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to have a seat. Let's get this meeting going. Okay, let's go to roll call. Mayor White. Present. Vice Mayor Hanshaw, here. Councilwoman Lance, here. Councilwoman Kenny, here. Councilwoman Tubbage, present. Michelle Leonard, Assistant Clerk, here. Dan Smith, Finance Officer, here. Troy Sire, Public Works Manager, here. Georgina City Community Development Manager, here. Chief McQuay, here. Lieutenant Yox, here. City Attorney Hand, I'm here. The agenda for this meeting was posted on the city's website, City Hall Bulletin Board, on Wednesday, August 31st, 2022, and amended on September 6th to add back up to item numbers 3, 6, 9, and 13. Thank you very much, Ms. Odom. Before we get started, I'd like to uh, make a few comments. First of all, welcome. We are uh, very pleased to have a large crowd of people attending our workshop over a few uh, of the house rules, how we run our business. If you decide you would like to speak, you're going to have two opportunities to speak tonight. You can start to speak at the very beginning of the meeting on any subject, any topic, including what is on the agenda or anything off the agenda. If you want to sit and listen to the discussion and as council goes through all the agenda items, at the conclusion of that, you will again have an opportunity to speak. It's an opportunity to um, make comments on maybe what council has talked about, maybe give some suggestions on something that you heard that you may have a different opinion on. Uh, generally, our council uh, workshops last about two and a half hours, so those that want to wait to the end, it's a it's a commitment, but we welcome you to to uh, to do that. This is a good time right now to turn your ringers off. If you have a phone that rings, uh, if you elect to speak, please give your name and address. Those that have signed up on the sign-up sheet will be allowed to speak first. After they have been allowed to speak, uh, those that have not signed up who have decided they want to speak, just raise your hand and you will be recognized. This council has made a big effort to make sure everybody that wants to speak does speak and we do want to hear what you have to say. Please speak clearly because everything you're saying is being recorded. It is public record. It will go into the records indefinitely for anybody to retrieve on request. So with that said, uh, think about what you're saying and how you say it because it is public record and anybody can ask for a copy of these records at a future date. Um, we do ask and we promise we appreciate you coming. We will be respectful to everyone that comes up to speak. And all we ask is that respect to be returned to the council. If you speak to, uh, when you speak to us, you speak to the entire council, basically to the chair. And uh, we're appreciative and we treat you very well. Last thing on the, uh, we'll start off with the public speaking part of it. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to, to speak without waiting for the entirety to speak again. Uh, you will not be allowed to speak again during the agenda until we get to the end of the council meeting. So if there's something you want to say, 
this is a good time to say it's oftentimes people come here and they'll make a few comments because they have to go home they can't stay but first you can make your comments to the council and leave if that's what you would like to do so with that said we will start the meeting we go to agenda item number one which is the public comments um Ms. Odom, has anyone signed up? Brian Donnelly. Welcome, Mr. Donnelly. Thank you, sir. Council members, I am honored to be here tonight with you. I have never been in these chambers before. My name is Brian Donnelly. I live at 7337 West Anthony Road in Ohio, Florida. I am your write-in candidate for District 4 as County Commissioner. And I wanted to come here tonight to present who I am and why I'm running to you so you can better understand my candidacy. I am a former three-time elected municipal planning official. I studied engineering in college. I have represented this country at the Olympics in two Olympic Games. I was I'm a solid waste management expert. Over the past 25, 30 years, I have represented towns, cities, counties, countries, and companies all over the world. From such things as urban planning, vertical growing, waste management, how to set up a stock factory, whatever it was, I was the fixer of the group and I was the one who was called in to find out what was wrong. I have taken out papers late in, in this whole routine because I didn't really want to run. But things are going not according to plan here in Marion County, if I may, for a moment. Um, a lot of people are afraid. A lot of people uh, don't like what we're becoming. And um, people have become despondent, in, in my view. Our land, our farms, our natural resources, uh, they're changing way too fast. We're in hyper-development mode here in Marion County. One of the issues that I know concerns this council, and I applaud you for taking the, the view that you have done, is about turnpikes. I have signed a no-build pledge, first of all. I am not for a turnpike destroying our farms, our natural resources, and our livelihoods. Uh, the second reason that I am running is because I think Marion County is in financial trouble, if I may for a moment. Um, we have a lot of unfunded needs. What is an unfunded need? It's a hidden tax that people don't realize. The reason why we don't have better roads, better schools, more hospitals, sewer plants, and what have you, is because we have actively asked developers to come here and develop our county at a lower cost by lowering our impact fees. Taxpayers are actually paying for the destruction of this county. I have 25 seconds. I ask you to go look at my website, votebriandonnelly.com. I'm a write-in candidate. You have to fill in the dot, and you have to write my name in. Remember, fill in the dot, write Donnelly on the spot. Thank you so much, Mayor. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for visiting. We appreciate it. Ms. Odom, who's next? You have that working? Tammy Seven. Oh. <laughs> Name and address. Hello and good evening. My name is Tammy Seven. Address 20077 Southwest 110th Street in Nellan, Florida. I'm here representing as the director of the Boys and Girls Club of Marion County within the Dallas City. Our mission is to enable all young people, especially those that need us the most, to reach their full potential as productive, caring, and responsible citizens. And anything that we do within City Council, it is my honor to raise and help raise our youth to be caring productive and responsible. So I'm here to support you um, and all of our city members and our leaders to raise those leaders for our future. That's all I have to say. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, wait, I have a question for you. Yes, ma'am. How was your son's wedding? It was great. It really was. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And I'm glad it was over. Terry, can you ask a question? Yes, ma'am. Oh, how long were you here? Yes, ma'am. How long were you here? Oh, were you here? Okay. Yes, ma'am. I'm sure I met you then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Any other questions? And congratulations again. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Ms. Odom? Happy done. Ms. Dunn? Kathy Dunn, 113 at 600 Strive. In 2020, uh, campaigning the platform was taxes. We will work toward reducing taxes and treat taxpayer money as if it were our own. It's time now we talk the talk to walk the walk, and I assume that the candidates in November of 2022 will be wanting to do the same thing across the board because we are living in a time of high inflation. You go to the grocery store, you can't get out for over under $100 to the gas station, $70. So uh, in 2020, we built a modest three bedroom, two and a half bath home. Our taxes now for property taxes are $1,100 a month. So being that we're retired, we're on a fixed income. So I try to be a good citizen in Van Allen, follow the speed limits, um, participate in civic organizations, dig weeds all over town, and I'm happy to do that, but have some compassion by keeping the millage rate the same and not raising the millage rate. Because the time will come if we keep raising taxes every year when I won't be able to afford to live in my home and I'll have to give it up. Because I really love living in Dun Allen, but I won't be able to pay the taxes if it keeps going up every year. So, thank you. Uh, Ms. Dunn, if I could just comment, the news for you is in the budget that is currently being discussed and is quite far advanced. The millage rate has been reduced from last year. So, we are, we are, doing the best we can. It has been at 6.5, and we're talking about reducing it to 6.3. Okay, Ms. Ms. Odom? Adam Smith. Welcome, sir. Odom Smith, 20946 Walnut Street. Um, I'm here from the Nellie Community Services, and I'm excited to tell you now that um, we've been in operation for a little over a year, and we're looking for other businesses to come out and show off the talents that they have. Um, we're at 5013C, and we actually started doing uh, medical, dental, and health checks, and we do legal, uh, legal services. So the Nellie Community Services is really doing a lot for the community and uh, for the physical medical and material educational needs of the people. So we just wanted to let y'all know, and we have an event coming up on October the 8th. We'd like a lot of businesses to come out and get a booth and support the what, what event is that, sir? That's um, the Ellen Days. The Ellen Days? The Ellen Days. That's October the 8th. Where is that? That's going to be over at Holy Faith Community Church. OK, is that, is that where there's going to be um, People of talent, of talent playing. Yes, we're gonna have Elvis there. We're gonna have uh, Elvis and Dave Atkins. We're gonna have the Karate Kids. We're gonna have a petting zoo, prizes, a whole bunch of stuff set up for the day. Uh, food trucks. It's gonna be a beautiful day. All right, now you got my interest. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> yeah, From ten to two. 10 to two. Yes. October. 8th? October eighth. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. So, Julian and Elder. I'll pass for now. Thank you. Okay. Next. Taylor Godwin. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Name and address. Hello. My name is Taylor Godwin, and my address is nine seven nine six. Southwest 195th Circle, Denillon, Florida. So, 
My name is Taylor. Um, I did. Um, I attended the University of Miami for a year and a half studying biology and music, and since then I have moved in with my lovely grandmother, and I'm attending CF, finishing my music education degree. Um, I am very passionate about health and um, psychological well-being, um, and so I wrote a little piece. Um, we can all recount times we have ate unhealthily and notice their repercussions of it. I'm a music teacher at the Boys and Girls Club, and I've seen a myriad of unhealthy food provided. Although we do it graciously accepted from Donnell Middle School, there are healthier and more economical options available. Something as simple as the food you eat can increase consciousness and improve decision-making skills throughout life. For example, if a student is inclined to eat healthy food groups, for example, fruits, vegetables, etc., they are more cognizant of which foods have substance rather than the inverse using substances to sustain them. For example, um, donuts are invariably unhealthy. Do we want the, do the generation to be unwell, unmotivated, and unproductive, or do we want the opposite? Um, there's a quote from the SA Health that says, in the short term, poor nutrition can contribute to stress, tiredness, and our capacity to work. I have experienced this. Um, and over time, it can contribute to the risk of developing some illnesses and other health issues. Um, including, not limited to, overweight, um, obesity, tooth decay, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, osteoporosis, cancer, depression, and eating disorders. Um, how can we integrate these fundamental principles into a curriculum? How can we tailor our budget to meet the nutritional and developmental needs of students, including healthy food, um, nutrition program, arts programs, guitar, piano classes in schools and resources for instruments? How can we ensure that the future generation are practicing good decision making? Um, from a teacher's perspective, I want my students to have all the resources available to pursue healthy interests that can mitigate stress, um, like learning music and pursuing artistic endeavors, as opposed to being subjected to precarious situations such as drug use and abuse. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Ms. Soto? Thank you so much. Susan Jones. Ms. Jones. Susan Jones, 9129 Southwest 190th Avenue Road in Don Ellen. Um, on your desk, council members, is a summary of um, where the art gallery, Rainbow Springs Art, has uh, been focusing the last 60 days. Um, we are delighted to learn from Troy that the painting of the exterior of our building is in the budget again this year. Um, and we're hoping funds will, have, funds will not have to be redirected as they were last year, but it did go into the building. It was just an electrical project instead of an exterior project. Uh, we are, as well, talking with Troy about um, repair and replacement of the front entrance. There's some single pane glass there and some older wood that hasn't held up well, so we're anxious to um, get that addressed. We have actually uh, attached it to your summary, a couple of pages that show the proposed or options. I'm not sure either one of these options will actually end up being the design for the sign at the corner of uh, Williams in Pennsylvania that I spoke to you about in July. But we do have funding to replace this sign. It was originally funded by the uh, Historic Village Shops, which is an organization that does not now operate or functional. Uh, we will be looking at design options that make it highly legible. Uh, the print needs to be big enough where if you're going by at the speed limit, you should be able to read it. And so we want it to be eye-catching, but not clutter. The um, Historical Preservation Board, I understand, uh, needs to be consulted, and I plan to do that next Tuesday, as well as I've been in conversation with Georgina about uh, compatibility with the overall signage plans for the city. In terms of classes and programs, we've got a very full schedule. We have three um, in September. 
and well, four actually, well, five, excuse me, five uh, programs in September. Uh, two are on um, an actual art skill, acrylic pouring, but we're bringing in people from the community to talk about being at peace with yourself, the Zen life. Uh, travel experiences, two of our local residents sold everything they had and got on a boat and went to the Caribbean. Um, so they're going to talk about their experiences. And then Ro Martinez, who is a professional abstract artist, uh, will be demonstrating and just discussing her creative techniques. In October, there are additional um, programs and classes available. One that's a little bit new for us is the reading by three different authors uh, who have uh, written novels. And I've read one, and it's really a good read. So I encourage you and your friends and neighbors to consider um, coming to the reading by these authors. I have a gift for the city of Dunellen. I will be delivering it tomorrow morning because of my dash out the door. I forgot it today. I was going to do show and tell. But essentially what it is is a, an updated collection of paint samples for the historic village. In the past, if someone wanted to paint their building or paint their trim or their door, they were required to come to the city of Dunellen and sit here and look at a book. Uh, to determine what colors they wanted to explore. This book was made specifically to be on loan to anyone who would like to reserve it without cost. They may want to develop a process for having them identify themselves and their address so we can track it down. If it doesn't come back in a timely manner, whatever your process is, is fine. But what I found when I reviewed the book that was available from the city is that there were duplicates. There were paint names that had changed China Doll evidently is not considered appropriate anymore. It's been named something else. It's a pretty red, but nobody really cares about that. What they care about is, do, am I looking at the samples that I can really use? So this is a gift from Rainbow Springs Art to the city. We're also going to give one to the Historic Society and the Chamber. And those will be available for loan as well. Um, there is a festival going to be held in March. There has been some debate about whether we could staff it. So we are anxiously looking for volunteers who have any or no skills. Basically, there are jobs for everyone. There's everything from picking up trash at the end of the thing, event to helping uh, wrap merchandise or booth set. Uh, the, their event will be in March. I've spoken to this before. I am looking to the city for some um, support with traffic control, and use of the electronic sign. I believe that was available to us last year. And we're very excited. We have over 20 artists already signed up and paid in advance, and we have several food vendors. So uh, we're optimistic it will be a very successful event. We're going to have several co-chairs this year instead of one chair and burning that person out. There is a lot of work goes into a festival, as anyone who's done Boomtown or uh, other events knows. So I'm open to questions if there are any. Ms. Jones, is it, is it a one-day festival? It is a one-day festival. So one thing that always uh, intrigues me is when you have a one-day outdoor festival, what's plan B in the case of rain? It's a very good question. Mm -hmm. If the artists are willing, we would consider rolling to the next day, but many of them have travel commitments. So that's a difficult question. Weather is one of the big risks in any outdoor event. And we liked the two-day event we had before, but our artists frankly said that it is a stretch physically um, to do two days, and they preferred the one day. Now, we, we may go back to two days after this, Round, but uh, at this point, that's the decision of the organization. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Odom? I don't have anyone else signed up. Okay. Everyone who has signed up has spoken. Now we'll go through the audience. If anybody would want to raise their hand, Mr. Porter. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Porter at 11835 East Blue Cove Drive in Donnell. So I wanted to speak for just a few minutes about a big issue that's coming to the council's way. And that's, uh, <clears throat> that's dealing with the ordinance ORD 202205, 202, which is dealing with short-term rentals. 
So the planning commission should be finished with it soon, and it'll come your way. Um, it's a really pretty significant item for the city of Benalla. It's, it's kind of insidious how it happens. If you got a house and you're not using it all the time, you kind of look over and you go, I can, I can rent that out for a few days and get some cash. So you just go online, take a few pictures, and the cash starts rolling in. The problem is you just made a big decision because it's no longer a home, it's a business. It's a business, there's no doubt about it. It's a highly regulated business with the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. So the state of Florida, the Department of uh, Business and Professional Regulation, regulates short-term rentals. And so when you convert it from a house to a business, there's a lot of rules and regulations you have to comply with. And you may not even know about it. So, <clears throat> so in that, it really starts changing how that house is used. And, and so you have to register with the state for this business. And out of, uh, it's been reported by a short-term rental owner that there's some 50 of them in the city limits of Dunallen. If you look at the site Air DNA, Air DNA, which is for short-term rental owners, you'll see some graphs of our zip codes and it's going up exponentially. And out of all these people, right now today, there's 15 that are registered with the state. One of them is a business, and I'm not sure they're really renting out their business for people to come stay for a few days. So <clears throat> that's a low percentage. That means that the other people are operating illegally, as an illegal business. It's hard to tell who these people are because they advertise on some 50 or 60 websites. So it's going to be important for Dunham to kind of figure out who all these people are once you form your ordinance. It's a very technical thing. So I'd like to work with the council. I'd like to work with the planning commission and share information of, uh, that goes in behind having a short-term rental in the ordinances. Thank you. Go ahead. Any question? Oh, no, I just said thank you. Thank you. You said A R B N. A R D N A. A I R D N A. Okay. And it's just it just shows a lot of data about short term rentals in our zip code areas. If if I could. Add. That's not the only thing to find out who all these people are. What's that thank you. Thank you. If I can add to my fellow council members, I have been attending. The planning commission meetings and uh, this topic is um, being very well discussed with many people coming in and speaking from both sides of this issue so there is a lot of energy to this there's a lot of concern about it there's actually some emotion to it so once the uh, planning commission finishes their work and puts it in our direction, it will be for us to deal with. So it will, as Mr. Porter said, uh, if it's anything like the Planning Commission, it will be something that um, will have a lot of uh, participation from the residents that have issues, not issues, but they have thoughts about that. Okay, anyone else in the audience that would like to speak? Here's your chance. Yes, Tim. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the young lady to come up and spoke about nutrition. Uh, nothing else matters if we don't, don't have our health, and she is right on. Without good nutrition, it's like putting water in your gas tank. It's car just not going to work right. Uh, the other thing I like to do is clarify uh, uh, about the really great comment. Um, at 6 5, that was, uh, that was going to increase everybody's tax bills by a little over 6%. Where it's at right now at 6.3, and when it was, that was uh, uh, produced August 22nd, that's going to be a three and a half percent increase on the on the Dunellen residents tax bills. Um, I believe it can get down to 6.2 um, with a couple recommendations and that would make it about one and three quarter percent increase. To keep the tax bill the same it would have to go down to a 6.1 increase. So I just want to clarify based on that. Uh, Ms. Dunn, Ms. Dunn coming up here uh, in, in speaking to the military. Um, this. Uh, 
next one I'm going to bring up, I'm going to apologize for being so pointed in this. I'm just frustrated by the continuation of spending tax dollars without solid business plans. And what this has done in the past is it's, um, it's made a lot of poor decisions that are still costing the, the taxpayers. Uh, the taxpayers are still paying $175,000 a year to pay down the green light uh, debt, and they're going to be paying that down, I believe, for the next decade, close to it anyways. So that's a big chunk of tax dollars that are going out for a poor decision. Uh, another poor decision that happened uh, after the green light was we brought a, bought a broken down waterworks plant, and that helped the city lose our profitable waterworks plant. Um, so there's revenue that's not coming in, uh, and et cetera. Now I'm going to go to the topic. Um, I'm asking that stop the TIF funds, please stop any funding and any time spent on Main Street and $300,000 worth of signage. As you're going to see at the end of the presentation, there is no business plan, there is only marketing language. Mm -hmm. um, there is still not a business plan. The same department doesn't have enough time uh, to fix codes and do other things. We've heard this in this meeting before, and I'm certainly not picking on anybody, but what I'm... Um, uh, but this is what's going on. The, uh, <clears throat> uh, please, the council is the only vote that vote and voice that the taxpayers have. Don't let our money be wasted on ventures that are not backed up by a business plan that show a return for the taxpayers' dollars. Um, it's, it just cannot continue on this way. We have too much bad history that shows that it just doesn't work that way. Um, but without a business plan, we get into a lot of trouble and it costs the tax off the payers a lot of money. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else that would like to speak to me about any, any topic, new old, or something that we may be speaking about a little later? Okay. Anyone, uh, Minnesota on Zoom, that might want to speak? All right, so everybody has had their opportunity to speak. Several people have taken advantage of it. It's uh, 6.07 and we will now move off of public comments to number two, board reports. Do we have any board reports? Yes. to DR Bill 11661, Camp Drive, Chair of the Dillon Planning Commission, more of a comment than a report, just to let you know ongoing, and to address Mr. Porter's comments. The Planning Commission is continuing to review the proposed ordinance for short-term rentals. We've had very strong participation for two meetings. Um, most of the time for both of those meetings have been taken up with taking public comment. We have a, a, a upcoming meeting schedule. I don't have it right in front of me, but Ms. Sidwell sent out notices of a special meeting to continue to thoughtfully go through that ordinance line by line, and then um, we'll deliberate and then come up with our recommendations for the council. And then in addition, we still have an additional meeting to try to formulate uh, the final mission statement to incorporate that into the comprehensive plan as well. Thank you. Question. Yes. Um, I know this is uh, asking you to kind of look in crystal ball, but if you had to guess, considering you meet once a month, how many more meetings do you think you would have before you would be finished with your business and this would come to Well, I, I don't have the crystal ball because I, I can't speak for the, the commitment of time from the fellow commissioners. I would say that I think the consensus is. This is a very time-sensitive topic, and we will meet as often as necessary instead of the once a month to get this moved to council in an expeditious manner. And the reason why I ask that, as I said, going to your meetings, I think you're about two-thirds of the way through the document going line by line. So I'm anticipating, I'm anticipating maybe two more meetings. And Correct. Right. The first meeting was entirely, it was a couple hours, I think, it was just public comment. And I would say a half to three quarters of that second meeting was still taking public comment. Any questions for Chairman?
Your we all applaud and thank the planning commission. We, we know that that is, a, that is a real effort, and it's not appreciated, but it affects each and every one of us in many, many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for all your hard work for you and your team. And if I could just add one more thing, I believe, Ms. Diar, will you have some openings on the Planning Commission? Yes, we do. Right. Uh, so if there's anyone that's eligible that would like to participate in the city government, this is an excellent opportunity to get involved. So if you're interested and you're eligible, there's some eligibility uh, things you have to uh, check get with uh, either Mandy or uh, one of our other staff members and show us you're interested we'll, we'll pave the way for you anyone uh okay um any other reports board reports okay we will now move to item number three the dunnellen chamber and business association report hi judy Hello. <laughs> My name is Judy Twilliger. I'm the executive director of the Allen Chamber. Um, we have some new members in the chamber. We have Art and Motion Conservatory of Dance. We have Clearview Business Solutions and A to Z Accounting Solutions. We have some also have some upcoming events. Um, September 10th, we have Elvis in concert at the Historic Train Depot from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the tickets are $25 for general admission or $35 for limited VIP seats. And the tickets must be purchased in advance through DonellanDepot.com. September 20th, we have a dinner mixer at 5.30 p.m. at the Holy Faith Episcopal Church. This time it's going to be catered by Southern Palette. And the tickets are $15 for DCBA members and $20 for non-members. October 1st, we have a ribbon cutting for Fawn Scott Insurance Solutions at 20600 West Pennsylvania Avenue, and refreshments will be served at that as well. October 5th, we have another breakfast meeting, networking meeting at the First Methodist Church of Glen Ellen from 7.30 a.m. to 9 a.m., also catered by the Southern Palace. And the prices for that are $10 for members and $15 for non-members. On October 15th, we have our Two Rivers Music Festival and Food Truck Rally from 5 to 10 p.m. on Bostick Street and East Pennsylvania Avenue. <coughs> and we have nine bands this time. So it's going to be pretty great. Um, October 18th, we have another dinner mixer at Franco's at River Run at 5.30. And the tickets are also 15 for members and 20 for non-members. November 2nd, we have a breakfast, another breakfast networking event at the United Methodist Church from 7.30 to 9, and that one's going to be catered by the Front Porch Restaurant. Same prices apply, $10 for members and $15 for non-members. And then November 12th, we have the duck race at 9 a.m. at Swampy's. So we've got a busy couple of weeks coming up. Question. For the, um, the 15th, are you still looking for volunteers to help you that day? Absolutely. We always need volunteers. So anyone that's willing to help us out, by all means, just get in touch with me. I'm, 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 I'm sacrificing and I'm helping. I'll be at the beer booth. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's always, it really, in all honesty, it really is always a good time. And it's, it's, it's worth it. it. It's so much fun just seeing where everybody's coming from. And mm -hmm. it's a great time. And, we always, my office volunteers over there, and we always have a great time, so uh, I highly recommend it. You don't have to go to the beer booth, you can do other things. We can come visit you at the beer booth. Thank you. Thank you very much. And by the way, the uh, breakfast the other morning was, I thought it was very successful. I know it's the first one y'all done in a long time, and I thought it was very successful. Yeah. That's what we're going to keep doing, and it really didn't work out well. Good deal. Uh, a common theme that you're probably hearing is if any of you are looking for some way to get involved, there's plenty of opportunities in the city. Just today, we had a request from the Chamber of Commerce, if anybody wants to help out uh, with their activities, contact them. Susan Jones said she would appreciate a volunteer or two with the art festival. We have Kathy Dunn in the house, who uh, heads the um, 
get together on the cleanups uh, and various aspects of the city, get hold of her. And what we also mentioned is we're looking for some planning commission members. So those of you that uh, say you're bored and there's nothing left in life and all that sort of stuff, we, we can we can get you busy if you let us. So raise your hand and let us know you're interested. Okay, um, that completes item number three. Now we're going to agenda item number four. Presentation from Granicus Aldo Cardona and Byron Gillen. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. Uh, Aldo from Cardona from Miami, Florida. Aldo, um, if, you, if you'll let me, give me just a second to sure. sort of introduce this. Um, thank you. So, as we all know, as a result of the pandemic, we started Zooming, we started live streaming, we started doing a lot of things that we didn't normally do before meetings. And now it's become sort of a hybrid um, meetings where we're still incorporating zoom we're still live streaming but it's all been very piecemeal and i know that you all know that we've had our challenges <laughs> with this at times um with having to pull in captioners that might not be you know coming in all the time or, or i mean although they're they're great I, they have very good captioning services um but just there's just so many moving parts to what we've been doing we've been finding it very difficult to sort of find a solution to consolidate um, all of these things and still be able to allow um, somewhat of a hybrid solution where the, the public can still participate remotely can still view the meetings remotely um, and this company came to me actually uh, through mr porter some time ago mentioned to me that marion county uses granicus um, so I've looked into that a little bit, and then when Michelle was at her conference, um, met Aldo and um, got to know a little bit more about the company. So we started working with them on um, what might be the best agenda management and meeting management solution for the city of Denellen that would still accomplish all the goals that we would like to um, to meet with uh, as far as public participation. And involvement during the meetings that sort of thing and found that we really really like their um, their website option as well right now we use Civic Plus and have been for oh gosh at least probably 10 years now um, and so we found that their their website solution was very attractive to us and also by bundling these different services it can save the city some money rather than just going with a, an agenda and meeting management solution, but by also bringing in the website solution and some other solutions that, that Aldo is going to talk about today. So this is just, uh, we will have a, a written proposal for you um, if this is something that you feel like you want us to continue to pursue after you see his presentation. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hogue. Are you Mr. Cardona or Mr. Gillen? Uh, Mr. Cardona. Okay. Thank you. And uh, Gillen will be, Mr. Gillen will be on Zoom. Virtually. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Have at it. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Actually, this is the second time in the last five days I've been up here. My daughter ran in the Ocala Invitational there oh. on Saturday. Yeah. Beautiful town, obviously. Um, and I'll probably be back to see Elvis on September 10th. <laughs> <laughs> he's really good. Okay. Uh, the second time he's mentioned him, so he's yeah. definitely good, right? Um, uh, Michelle, can we have the we're not going to bore you with too much uh, slides here, but uh, first and foremost, thank you for, for letting us be up here. Uh, for the past month or so, we've been working with your, your clerk's office. By the way, not because they're here, I'll, I'll tell you they're one of the best clerks that, that you'll, you'll, you'll have and find in Florida. I get to work with a lot of them. That's my it's actually a, a reward, you know, to, you know, to, to work with the clerk, the clerk's office. The clerk's office is pretty much the heart of, of city council and, and, and the city government. Um, they wear many hats, so anytime I can work with them and, and make their lives easier, then thus make your life and their life easier. Um, it's it's exciting and rewarding. So um, without further ado, uh, with respect to your time, this is the agenda we put together. Uh, introductions, you'll get to, to meet us. Uh, 
we always find our, believe ourselves to be partners and consultants with you. We're not just here to say hi, you know, uh, drop a speech, sell something and leave. We're here with you the whole way uh, throughout this whole process. So you'll get to meet Greg and Steve. Through these conversations with Mandy and Michelle, we've also learned the strategic priorities of your residents, yourselves. We'll discuss that as well. Uh, the Florida resident uh, references, you know, we're, we're fortunate enough to work with over 250 Florida uh, municipalities and you get to, you know, we'll discuss that a little bit more. And then why grants, right? Why are you going to choose us and our solutions and why do you want to partner with us? And then return on investment, right? That's very important. And, uh, and the price. And then we'll find, we'll finish with some questions um, and answers to you guys. That make sense? Next slide. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, sorry. I'm 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 sorry. i uh, all right, so this is your team here, right? Uh, Ellie, uh, she works with the with all of the East Coast. She handles the agendas. I mean, sorry, the website portion of Granicus. You know, Granicus is one of the largest, if not the largest, software government software provider. Uh, we work from everyone from national, federal, uh, sorry, federal, uh, state, and local. Um, so we have many Lego pieces in the in the box, right? And one of them is that website. Ellie's our our um, champion for that. Byron Gillen, who gonna, who's going to take over in a few slides, he's been at this for 25 years. So he's, a, he's our expert and our district manager. And then myself there, that's my glamour shot before COVID. <laughs> and before I grew this and I had a lot of gray hair. Uh, I'll have to update that. Um, born and raised here in Florida. So I'm like, extremely excited to be representing Florida clerks and you guys and your residents. Went to Central Florida. so and born in South Florida. So, um, again, excited to be working with you guys. So these are some of the strategic priorities that we discovered while working with Mandy and Michelle. And again, it's a lot with what goes on with their office that trickles down to you all and to the residents. Um, streamline the, the, the agenda process, very important. Uh, the amount of time, paper, money that can be spent on running around and not streamlining this process it, it, it adds up substantially. And uh, Granicus has figured out a way through their software to, again, put that streamlined and make their jobs a lot easier so it gets your jobs a lot easier. Uh, transparency is very important. As we know here as Florida residents, ADA compliance is big. Uh, we, you know, there's a lot of sharks swimming out there looking for blood in the water. Right? When, they, when something's not ADA compliant, Granicus makes sure that is all their agendas that can be published to that website are ADA compliant, and so is the closed captioning. And then again, saving time and money on the public meeting process. Um, they get frustrated, I'm sure, like many clerks throughout Florida and you know the nation, they get frustrated with the, the, the system, right? The, the way they're, they're doing things, and especially now with the hybrid meeting, it gets even tougher. And then the digital presence, presence right? Marion County already has our, our website as many others in, in Florida. Um, that's the first experience for most residents, right? We, we live in an internet age now, so when they type in an Ellen, they have to come up to their one-stop shop, which is their Amazon experience. So you wanna make sure that that website is that Amazon experience. They can find notes, uh, contracts, whatnot, throughout the agenda process uh, a lot easier, and again, ADA compliant. And they can find out where they can, I mean, they can pay their bills, boards of commission, sign up for boards, short term rentals, all of that could be all on the <coughs> website. Is uh, I just Byron on the Zoom? I am. Byron, can you hear me? I can hear you loud and clear. Can you guys hear me okay? I am on. Well, as he gets on there, Hello. Hey, Byron, can you speak up a little bit, please? You got, you got it. it. I am here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 
Thank, Thank you very, very much. much. Good evening, sir. My name is Byron. Byron Yellow, and as Alan mentioned, the director, the director of sales, sales here at Grace is thrilled to have the opportunity to be here. here. I, I wish I was in person. person. I'm also a Floridian in Hollywood, Florida. Florida. And, and as Alan mentioned, I've worked, I've worked with many different counterparts, counterparts in Hootie County, County for the, the last 25 years, years helping with the entire city engagement process, including the media stuff, but website and communication as well. So hopefully, during the question and answer time, I can add some perspective and some knowledge that might help guide the city a little bit. So do so we currently have that on the screen? screen? I can't see, see your screen. screen. I mean, you guys can't see, see me, me, which is totally fine. Uh, do you, you have, have a screen, screen of variety of different Florida clients right now? Yes. Okay, okay fantastic. fantastic. So as so you can see, we have over 5,000 5, companies across the country. As I mentioned, the largest tech provider in this space. The reason why we've gotten to the point that we have is we've earned the confidence of 260 different Florida municipalities, including the county, Need in Tampa, Florida, 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 all all around you folks as well. well the reason, the reason I, mention I mention this is, is we all work, work as a team, team. Not, not just creating this and these logos that you see up here, here but all, all of you work, work together. together. The reason why all of you work together is because we and those associations are learning best practices from one another. So this is not just a software company, this is something that has been 22 years of experience and best practices to apply to this. So if I could ask you please to go to the next slide, it's going to be challenging do, uh, what uh, I want, I want to, share to share with you is be visual, visual as far as, far as what we're we talking, talking about here today. We talked talk about, about a lot of neat stuff, stuff about staff, staff be more efficient. And, and really, really, what are we going to provide, provide to our taxpayers, to our businesses, to the businesses of the beautiful city? And so, what this slide is going to demonstrate is how we're going to do that. So, the first time you click on it, you should see resident, visitor, and business up on the screen. Does everyone see that okay? Not yet. Okay. No problem. So the first thing it's going to do, it's going to bring up three letters. They, the purpose of this is to, I, you know, if I was there live, it would be like me drawing on a whiteboard. So you kind of visually see how this all builds together. So when you hear a civic engagement platform, you're probably wondering, what the heck is that, right? So I wanted to kind of just build that story. I put yourself in there as a, as a resident of the city as a business owner in that city, or someone who wants to visit that community because they have a race that's coming up this weekend or whatever it might be, like Alda did, right? So what is the first thing we're gonna do when we wanna look up information that pertains to me, my family, or my business? Each and every one of you have done this. You've gone to Google, and you've typed in a search, and the first thing it's gonna do is take you to that landing page, your website. That's your digital front door. And that's the first part of this project, is create that digital relationship and experience with your resident, business, and visitor community. That's impactful. Yes, we want to maintain that branding and really showcase what the city is all about. But at the end of the day, these people are going to your website for a purpose, for a service, for something for it to do. And we really pride ourselves on ensuring that that service is met in as little clicks as possible. So are we now on the screen where we see resident, visitor, and business? Yes. Okay, fantastic. So as you click through there, it's going to start building up the actual civic engagement platform. So once I go to your website, as a resident or business owner, it's unfair to think that I'm going to keep coming back. You talked about Elvis and this fantastic event that's coming up. Well, if I'm interested in that, I bet there's other events you're going to want to promote three months down the road. I'm a busy professional, two kids, and, and the reason I'm not there right now is I also have three pets and we're all in a hotel room right now because I have termites and we're at a house tenant and I didn't realize they did what we needed to do. So that's why I'm not there. But this is the kind of life that all of your residents, your businesses go to. So having them come back to your website is probably not fair. So as this light site actually built out, it shows you that this site is will proactively communicate out to your residents. Sign up for notifications when events are updated on your site. Meetings and agendas and minutes and videos. Once they're posted and they're information that I care about, it'll actually be delivered right to my lap, not forcing me to go back to that particular company or to that particular website, excuse me. Now, as you click through this slide, you'll see a lot of different circles on the bottom that say meeting management, licensing and permit, applications and requests. We're working with Marion County as of today, for example, adding an additional closed captioning on those videos to help your residents 
that are disabled that want to see what's going on with county information. We heard from the planning group and how stressed they are at the city due to lack of resources. You're not alone. Marion County's in the same boat. And they're turning to Granicus and automation to help their staff be more efficient with public records requests that you'll be seeing a new solution coming out, all part of this particular platform that we're talking about this evening. Now, as we build in here, you're going to grow over time, right? And do different things. The topic on short-term rentals is an extremely important topic throughout the state of Florida. And that's something that Granicus can also help with regarding technology and add into later as we grow into our partnership together. But all of these together create that civic engagement platform. So now we're going to convert into exactly what we're, we're proposing for the city and we'll talk about next steps. So I'd like you to go to the next slide and we will talk about what your staff should be looking for in the companies in your partnership. Yes, the software is important, right? You've had a fantastic provider for the last 10 years providing your website. But what we need to look at now is things like long-term adoption, growing into the solution, creating that consistent experience that folks that go to your county already are getting and get that to your city through your city services as well. So you have the opportunity to expand and grow with the software and the actual company itself. If we go to the next slide, you can see some of the, the bullets and the important things that your team has looked at regarding what's important with the software. ADA compliance is an extremely important topic here in Florida. We have hired the Department of Justice to go through our software to ensure that every aspect of your web page, your searching, your search pages, agendas, minutes, cover sheets, making sure they're all compliant and delivered to your particular residents and businesses. But things like security, too. We're in a weird world right now. You need to make sure that you pick a vendor that has a FedRAMP secure data center because you're capturing your residents' information on these web pages. The last thing you want is any sort of hacking or anything going on. As Aldo mentioned, we work with the federal government. When your veterans get information from the VA, that's through Granicus because of that FedRAMP security. And so that is the type of solution you need to look at. So you can go to the next slide and that shows kind of all the certifications. If anyone on the council is an IT wizard, I am certainly not. I play one on TV, but you'll recognize a lot of the different uh, certifications when it says Granicus Reliable and Secure that we really work hard to meet up to. And these are new standards that no one else in the industry can live up to. And that's surely because of our size and our resources of what we can expand to. All right, so I'll wrap with key differentiators and our pricing and ROI, and then we'll open it up for questions. So if you click now to the final slide, we should have a slide up here that says, okay, what are the key things that Granicus is gonna provide part of that project? So are we at that slide now that says key differentiators at the top? Yes. Okay, so there's four things to really experience. The first thing, again, this isn't software, right? We have human beings, the residents in your community. They're gonna be polled on how do you, they want this service to look like. Same with your staff. Same with your business owners. We're actually gonna take the time to work with them and pull them on what they're looking for through the site. If you go to Marion County's site today, whether it's on your website or on your phone or on your laptop, what have you, it'll adapt to the services that are most important for your residents today at the county. We'll do the same for that city. The customer service is 24 seven and we hire people that are in your shoes. Your implementation experts a lot of times have government experience. I've been doing this for 25 plus years. Again, I'm thankful the video is not on so you don't see all the gray hair on my beard. But this is, you know, the type of folks that you'll be working with when you implement solutions like this. It's very important, not for training and simplicity, but best practices. Have we considered the council's new strategic initiative and comprehensive plan? How are we going to track that on our website and promote that to our residents and our taxpayers on how we're being fiscally responsible with our budget and taxpayers' money? This is the type of expertise you'll get from us. And then obviously the long-term ROI and cost of ownership, that leads us to the last slide before I open it up to any questions you have, is our ROI analysis. When you look at this, there's really two ways to look at this. You have your front-end site, which is your service to your community, and then the back-end, that Amazon-like experience for your staff members, making it easier and more, you know, uh, more efficient to do their jobs, to collaborate with staff, make sure we have accountability and an audit trail so we can track every revision of all of our documentation in the same platform, not using a bunch of different platforms. So the analysis you see on here is very common for cities of your size and the type of return that you can see just on the meeting software, which will be the first part and phase that will roll out. That you should be able to roll out in the first 90 days 
And within eight months, you should see a return on your investment on the efficiencies we're gonna get both soft, soft savings on making your staff more efficient, but hard savings and printing copies and making changes and edits and resending that documentation out, all of that's gonna be automated in the base backend of this solution. Then if we go to the final slide, please, which is our pricing slide, this shows you everything together, right? Your website and our, uh, our meeting software. The website takes a little more time because we're gonna pull your staff, we're gonna pull your residents, we're gonna pull your business folks, we're gonna pull you, the council, what you wanna see on your site, what are the goals? And we're gonna give you best practice recommendations of other cities that are in your community uh, that are using this particular application from West Park to Orlando to Miami to you know, all the different communities that are currently using Granicus and counted on us to help them think through what this looks like. That takes a little bit more time. So you see the annual fee here that's up on the screen. That will be reduced by $4,000 in year one because we don't charge you for your website during that first year. It's just this one-time fee that you see up here and to do all that consulting configuration and training. On the next two slides, we did provide implementation plans for you guys to look at and view if you want to see that. Again, a normal implementation plan on a pioneer project like this for your website can take anywhere between four to six months after you do all that consulting and launching. The meeting part of it, the backend solution can take anywhere once we start 30, 60, 90 days, we can get that up and running. So the next two slides show you the implementation plan for these different solutions and when your taxpayers can see the outcome of that return on investment that you're looking for. So I know we went about four minutes over based on my clock. So I really appreciate the extra time that we went and did. Now I'm gonna open up for any questions and answers you have from the council. Question. Yes, could you explain the implementation fee again? Yeah, sure, Ken. So if you go to the slide that actually is right after pricing that says at the top, an example of a website implementation timeline, you're gonna see a lot of different steps on how this actually flows. That one, the one-time fee you see on here covers a majority of this consultation. The first two weeks is that, consulting, the homepage layout and the selection, collect all and pull your different folks and how it's gonna look at and then map it all out. That takes a few weeks of consultation. Then weeks two through 10 is the building of that content. You have a lot of pages there in that Civic Plus website that you've been using for 10 pages, 10 years. A lot of that content, is it needed? Should it be refreshed? Is it ADA accessible? We're gonna help you go through all of that and talk about the migration of what's gonna come into the site and help you with that migration. So that's, two, that's a good solid eight weeks of hard work by your staff and our team working together. Then we're going to have a test launch about week 10 to 12, where we're going to test some things. We're going to go through testing with those people we polled, your, your residents, business owners, staff, your council, and make sure that we're on the same page with a launch about 12 weeks later. So that implementation, that one-time fee that you see, covers this about 12 weeks or so of consultation and work to do all that work. Does that answer your question, ma'am? Okay. Can I just I'm sorry that oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we're talking about four thousand dollar implementation fee. I don't believe so. If you go back to the previous slide, it looks like it was a twelve thousand dollar one time implementation fee. And Aldo and Ellie, please correct me. I'm not reading that correctly, but that is your implementation, your configuration, your training, all the hardware that you're going to buy for the streaming of this application and the video piece. That's included in that twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, if you don't mind. For, sure. Um, hi, everyone. Hi, Council. My name is Ellie Dilzell. Um, I'm a sales associate uh, for the digital side of things here at Granicus. Uh, I've been working with Manny and Michelle in regards to uh, the potential uh, website redesign happening in conjunction with the uh, the peak and other agenda management systems. So I just wanted to clarify something. So what you'll see on the pricing page of, of the presentation is the one-time fees, obviously for implementation, configuration, training and hardware sitting at $12,000. The annual fee, which, uh, which we have put as the annual fee in year one, um, on the slide will say 12,568. However, due to the timeline of how long it takes to implement um, test and have a new website go live, we give you a credit um, in the first year for the annual recurring cost of $4,000. So if you were to, if it makes it easier to think about it this way, um, the annual fee in the first year for this project would be 8,568 
with the 4,000, um, around 4,000 annual recurring cost um, beginning in year two, in addition to the, the agenda, the, the pricing that comes with the agenda, because the agenda solutions have a much quicker implementation than a website CMS design and go live, um, which is why those fees are included in the first year as opposed to the CMS fees. Does that clarify for you a little bit? Yes, thank you. Yep. Any other comments? Um, Ms. Odom, where is staff? So I did an analysis of um, Granicus compared to Civic Plus, which is the website uh, provider that we currently use that, um, and they have a very basic agenda platform that we don't pay for right now, but it is rather, rather difficult to work with. Um, not very user friendly. They do also have a solution. Um, Civic Plus has something called Civic Clerk that is agenda meeting management, which is what we're looking at Granicus to provide for us. Um, currently, uh, Civic Plus's annual hosting fee for the website is $5,800 a year. For Granicus, a recurring annual hosting fee would be $4,500 a year. So that would be a cost savings over time, um, just in that annual hosting fee. Uh, in addition to that, um, we pay for audio eye with uh, Civic Plus, which is $3,500 a year. That additional $3,500, we would not have to pay to Granicus because the ADA compliance is already factored into their hosting fee. So annually, what we're looking at um, compared to Civic Plus uh, would be Civic Plus, the $5,800 a year for hosting, uh, $3,500 for audio I, ADA compliance, uh, Civic Clerk, uh, would be an additional $3,500, so you're looking at $12,800 a year for your website and agenda and meeting management solutions. With Granicus, we look at an annual recurring uh, hosting fee of $4,500 a year, um, no additional fee for ADA compliance, and the initial um, setup fee of $8,568, um, which comes out to $13,068 annually. So it is a little bit more um, because we're paying that upfront cost because we have a migration to do and a whole new website to design. Um, but essentially, it's if we were to go this route by adding Civic Clerk to Civic Plus and having some sort of agenda and meeting management system, the, the cost is very, very close. There's uh, three less than a $300 difference annually. Um, so the Implementation is the $8,000 that um, we discussed. They're waiving the first year hosting fee of $4,500. Um, another area where we can experience some savings as well um, with uh, Zoom. Uh, if with the software, uh, there is an, um, excuse me, um, e comment, which is part of this program. So individuals who are wanting to make comment during the meeting can do so via e-comment and writing um, rather than allowing people to come over live speak in Zoom. So what we have right now budgeted for Zoom um, is $2,800, $2,880. So that would be a cost savings if we could do that. Um, we would also, save approximately eleven dollars to $12,000 on IT meeting management, and that's based on 26 meetings a year, and we all know we have way more than 26 mm -hmm. meetings a year. Um, we wouldn't require somebody to be sitting back there running Zoom and the YouTube and making sure everything is, you know, going smooth and hanging out in case something goes wrong. Everything will be integrated into one solution that we can manage without having to have somebody here at every meeting. Um, captioning, I'm not quite sure how that's going to work yet, um, but they do offer a captioning, and although you may be able to speak to that, currently our captioning budget is $7,900 a year um, to have captioners come in and caption these live meetings through Zoom. Um, and if, we're, if we were to continue to Zoom, 
we're going to have to continue to live caption. Um, Andy uh, had hoped to be here tonight, but something came up. And he had done some research and reached out to some other cities. And Aldo and I um, have talked about this, and he can speak to this as well. Um, he's had some experience with this. The issues with comments over Zoom is we have no control over the speaker's equipment or their environment. As you heard tonight, Byron sounded great. The next person may sound terrible because we have no control of what's going on on that end of the line. Um, their mic could be turned on too loud or they could be somewhere with lots of background noise, poor connection. That's why some sound fine and some sound, as Andy says, like a robot drowning in a tunnel. <laughs> there is also no good way to vet Zoom participants, so there is a risk of misuse and potential liability for the city. Um, other local municipalities have stopped taking public comments over Zoom now that they're back into in-person meetings full-time. Most only accept public comments in writing or in person, but a few accept recorded public comments through a voicemail system. Um, but those can be um, screened for appropriateness before they're played during a meeting. And if we eliminate Zoom from the equation, the whole meeting process would be vastly simplified. We could just stream straight to YouTube or the website, which we have the ability to do with this uh, solution and would be... Um, arguably more accessible to most people anyway. So I think we can we can talk about that if that's you know what council wants to do, but I'd also like to hear from um, Aldo, if, if we may, about some of his experiences with that same problem. Yeah, with Zoom. Um, actually, Byron and I were at a meeting, similar meeting like this, and it, it was hijacked, basically. You know, it was Zoom bombed by someone and racial epithets and all that you know, nasty stuff came up. With our solution, which many many of the uh, clients in Florida use, you own the the feed basically, right? So you you'll be able to simulcast it if you like to YouTube or whatnot. But at the end of the day, it's going to go through your to your website or through your website. Um, the public comments, the e-comments, also moderated by you. Obviously, it's public record, but it will be kept. But those that are the nasty ones won't be up; they'll be out there. But you moderate and, and run the meeting yourself. So you have more control. Okay. I have a question. The uh, 4,500 annual fee, how, how long is that fee guaranteed to stay at that level? Ellie, you want to you, so, you, go ahead, Ellie. So um, the way that the pricing works when it comes to an annual basis is we can never guarantee the changes that are going to happen in the market. So the pricing that we're providing for you um, right now and in the next five years for the contract, um, we can almost guarantee is going to be uh, as low as it'll be in the next um, in the next few years. So what you'll generally see um, is you have the $4,500 and it'll only go up um, about 5% year over year. Um, and I will, I have that as part of the formal proposal that I've shared with Mandy and Michelle, um, which um, of course she can forward off to you guys that breaks down the pricing on an annual basis for each of these solutions on a year by year basis over the next five years. Um, and I think it might be easier to take a look at that rather than me trying to explain it without you being able to see me or me share my screen. Um, but the $4,500, you'll only see a slight increase year over year um, with the expectation that in the next few years, if you were to become a net new customer with us, the pricing would be higher due to the market. So this is not a multi-year agreement. This is a annual um, renewing agreement? Just, yes, annual renewal. Mm -hmm. Five years or, or a one-year renewal automatically for five years? So it's a five-year contract that automatically renews each year? Yes. Okay. It's part of our national uh, procurement laws, and we're also in state contract, too. So you can't do more than five years. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Ms. Odom, it's, financially, it really sounds excellent. Um, and I know I've I've spoken with you a little bit about it, and Georgina, you you both seem to be pretty impressed with this. Michelle, hmm? not with Georgina, Michelle. Oh, well. So what what is what is your recommendation that we do? Well, if you're interested in in doing this, we have um, budgeted for the implementation in next year's budget. 
and we can get a formal contract um, drawn up for your consideration and approval. It is it staff's recommendation that we go in this direction? Yes. Okay, comments. Amanda, let me just kind of make sure I understood real quick and a great presentation for those who are here and not here, by the way. Thank y'all. Um, okay. So right now, if I'm understanding correctly, if we stroke the check tomorrow, it'd be for $8,568 plus $4,500 or just the $8,568? $8,568. And then next October, we're going to give them a check for $4,500. Correct. Okay. Um, and from what I could hear from the savings that you were talking about, it sounded like with the ADA, the Civic Plus, and the uh, Civil Clerk, that was probably about a $300 difference, but this program is much easier and simpler and more streamlined and more efficient for your time, which is not included in that analysis that you just did. And then if I'm not mistaken, I also heard that, um, not that we want to get rid of any of our IT people in the background, but that <laughs> he is listening. Um, but he is on Zoom. Yeah, that's what we're doing. But, yeah, <laughs> but, but that there would be an additional savings of, let's just go, the smallest additional savings would be $11,000 a year on top of. If we eliminate Zoom and uh, I'll have to get, uh, with Aldo because I, I was out the last couple of weeks and this was one of the questions that I had not gotten to yet was um, if there was an additional fee for captioning. Um, but if, if live stream through that program, is that included in that cost? That, no, closed captioning is an extra. It's a, but the live stream is included. Live stream is. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then you can also simulcast a YouTube that has the closed captioning for free. Okay. The, the challenge with that is the ADA compliance, right? And we can help you with that. And that's what you're paying that $7,900 a year with, with that other vendor, it sounds like, that's doing live ca captioning. Yeah. So that, that's what we would be replacing if you wanted to do that. So without, let's just say, we, can, we had to keep that $7,900 budgeted for captioning. Okay. We're still looking at... Uh, 11, 11, 7, 7, 11, 12, 13, at about fifteen to $16,000 savings. Just by eliminating Zoom and having to have IT on here at every single meeting. So for a business plan, that sounds like a smart decision, especially. And did I understand that the price would go up over the next five years annually up to 5%? Yes. Um, so I just wanted to uh, make sure that you guys had full clarity. Um, I don't know if you still have the presentation pulled up, but if you wouldn't mind maybe going back to the pricing proposal slide um, and taking a look. So you have the one-time implementation fees. Obviously, those are a one-time fee. The annual fee that we currently have stated includes the uh, agenda and minutes solution, the website CMS annual cost, the live and on-demand streaming, as well as the e-comment cost. Um, but the, in the first year, because of what I explained in regards to the implementation of the CMS and the amount of time that that takes, we take away the $4,000 fee, uh, the $4,500 fee, which puts you at the first year annual cost of um, $8,568. Now in the second year, that is when the annual cost for the CMS comes into place. That is when you would be looking at around what the number shows right now at 12,568, uh, which goes will go up year over year at a maximum of 5%. It's a, excuse me, it's a standard, in the software industry, it's a standard uplift of 5%, five to seven, it depends, uh, year to year. So in the in the proposal that we have drawn up for um for the for, for the city, um ours is that sitting at five percent. We were able to get it uh approved for five percent. Okay, Miss Kenny. Uh, well, in terms of a five-year contract, that seems to be like a pretty substantial contract. And that if we had to make changes, we would be able to do that at that time. Some of the things may change in terms of our needs. But what I like this presentation is we're reaching a lot more people. If we're ADA compliant, we have 
a certain portion of our community that would be very responsive to that. Definitely believe that we need the ADA compliance. And I'm very impressed with what the uh, city clerk office has done. Very impressed and, and very grateful. Very good. I would just, if you don't mind, I would just wanted, wanted to point out that it's been a huge pleasure to work with Mandy and Michelle. Um, this, we kind of decided that this is kind of just a starting point for Dunalyn, um, that there's so much potential in the future to grow in other aspects of your guys' digital presence and what you guys are offering your residents. Um, starting with the CMS and the, the public meetings process, um, there's also options for uh, farther down the line to implement um, our communication solution that'll allow you to further engage and reach more of your residents um, through a number of multi-channel systems, giving you access to our Granicus subscriber network, which will allow you to cross promote with other agencies in Florida who are also using this network. Um, so we're super excited because um, not only do we feel like we can save all of you um, some time and, and make it easier on your residents, but we also feel that there's great opportunity to grow with you guys in the future um, as these needs arise. So uh, I, we, we definitely appreciate your time and, and are excited for, for this potential project. Okay, hey, very good. Um, we're going to have to move on. We have a very um, busy, long meeting right here. So, Mandy, do you want to put this on the agenda for our upcoming meeting? Yes. All right. well, not for Monday. Not not for Monday. Okay. We, we need to work out the details of everything, and then we'll bring it we'll bring it to you at the next workshop in, for in, uh, for you to October. consider October. October, and you'll have the contract. And because we don't have it. we don't have anything budgeted for this year for this additional eight thousand dollars until after October first, anyway. Okay. So the recommendation by everyone that's familiar with this is a strong it yes. It is for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Folks, we do have to move on. We have 20 <laughs> items on the agenda and that was Same number four, that was number four. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you folks. Have a great night. All Thank right. You, Thank you. Very good. So make sure that's uh, on the agenda for October. Number five, I believe it has uh, been postponed to another date, correct, Ms. Yes, Odom? sir. We do not know yet when that other date may be, possibly October. Possibly October, yeah. Okay. So we move on now to number six, the proposal for conceptual plan of the police facility. Alan Gary for Kimberly Horn is here. Hey, welcome, sir. Good to see you again. Name and address. Gotta move it up a little. Uh, Alan Gary with Kimley Horn, 101 East Silver Springs Boulevard, Ocala, Florida. Uh, good evening, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity for this project. I'm here to just present to you tonight the IPO that's on the agenda for the Denellan Police Station conceptual plan. Um, what you'll get out of this plan is a concept layout of the entire site. It will include the building footprint, the required parking, open space and drainage areas. And along with that, so you get a, a detailed picture of what the site's going to look like with the, on the concept plan. Along with that, we're going to prepare a cost estimate for you, a preliminary cost estimate based on those improvements that we identify on the concept plan. We'll also give you a list of the required permits and what, how that might factor into the cost. Um, that estimate can be used by either you all or with our assistance to apply for federal and state grants. The information that will be contained in there is information that they're going to be looking for to help you fund the uh, police station. Um, with Kimley Horn, I, tonight with me is Joe London. There he is. Joe has been around Marion County for decades and is an expert at doing these types of facility plans. And I just wanted to give him the opportunity to kind of take you through his experience and what the process normally looks like for putting a, a public facility like this in place. Thanks, Alan. Now, my name's Joe London. Uh, my address is the same as Alan's, 101 East Silver Springs Boulevard, 3400 Nocala. Uh, as Alan said, I've been doing this a long time, over 40 years. Uh, I've done projects here in the city of Dunallen. 
uh, done a lot of public works projects. Uh, I've got 12 projects going for Marion County currently. Uh, but but I've, I've been by your site, came by there this afternoon. I saw it's mode. It looks like the property corners have been established. Uh, the things that we'll do for you, the first thing is this conceptual site plan. And that's what's in this proposal. It's a conceptual site plan. And what's included in a conceptual site plan? We're going to locate the building. Being told this building is going to be a modular building. And uh, so we will work with the modular uh, company and get the exact dimensions of that building and uh, know exactly where the doors are located and so forth. We will place that building on the site, make sure we meet all the setback criteria. And also we look at the lay of the land. I've already looked at the site. I can sort of tell where the land slopes. Uh, we'll work out parking. We'll give you adequate parking, not just code minimum. We'll look at handicap accessibility. We'll look at sidewalk for pedestrian access. We'll look at the driveway location so we have proper safe access for vehicles getting in off the site. We'll look at utilities, water and sanitary sewer, and a big east of drainage. Uh, I saw a big retention area just to the east of the site. That's uh, in a lower area. I think that's an FDOT pond. And there's always water standing in that pond. All right, so that, that tells me that we probably have a perched water table in that area. So we're gonna to want to keep the drainage retention area shallow, long, skinny, slender swales. And that'd be the best way to handle the drainage on that site. So conceptual plan is step one. Step two, if you like the conceptual plan and the funds work out and so forth, then we do the formal site plan. Well, what's that? Well, that's this set of plans. They're 24 by 36 inch sheets. And there's probably gonna be 10 or 12 of those sheets in this set. And it's going to have a cover sheet and general notes and what we call a horizontal geometry plan, which you might think of as a layout plan. And then it'll have a paving, graining, grading and drainage plan. We work out all the grades and make sure that the drainage works properly. Handicap accessibility, the parking space meets ADA code many times. Just before I left the office to come over here, there's a project and they didn't construct it properly. And now I have to be the bad person and tell them they have to tear it out and <laughs> reconstruct the handicap spot because they've got it too steep. So we'll make sure that is done properly. Uh, the other plans are utility sheets that shows the water and the sewer and the power. And, and we also work with all these different, the utility companies with Troy and the power company to get power to the building. All of that will be shown on these plans. Details will be shown on these plans uh, and erosion control sheet will be on these plans, all right? These plans will be submitted to the city of Den Ellen for review. And at the same time, these plans will be submitted to the Southwest Florida Water Management District. You, I'm sure everybody's heard of Swift Mud. That's their nickname. But uh, we do that simultaneously to expedite the process. And we'll talk about timing here in a second. Uh, but that's what's involved with step two, the formal site plan, all right? Now, permitting is the last thing I was going to talk about, and, and that is really critical. Uh, I have seen over the last several years, the time to get something permitted takes a lot longer, okay? Uh, there's been a little gridlock going on at, uh, at all the cities and the counties and the water management districts. There's just so much going on that things take longer than they used to take. So let's talk about time for a minute. How long is this whole process going to take? Well, the conceptual plan, six weeks, 
depends really how long when we work with the chief and work with your staff and give you exactly what you want, we're going to get feedback. And there will be a little back and forth process that, that, that we go through. We want to work with you. We want to give you exactly what you want. So I'm thinking that step one, this conceptual plan is a six, maybe eight week process. Step two, if you decide to go to step two, which is the formal site, plan, that could take six to eight months. So I want you to know that going in. A lot of people that come to me say, they think that, oh, this site, into it you just turn it in and you get it approved and we'll start construction no it takes a long time there's a lot of people that review this and it's going to take six to eight months after you give us authorization to proceed on a formal site plan until we have the approval from the city of Dunellen for the site plan and swift mud for what they call the environmental resources permit okay so I don't know how long between concept plan, and we give that to you and everybody's happy and we have that approved until you release us to do this formal site plan. That's entirely up to you. We could start immediately or we can wait as long as you want to wait. But that's what you need to know going in here. The very shortest period of time that I would see this project take, the absolute minimum would be eight months. Two months to do the concept, six months to do the formal site plan. And that's if you turn the sluice immediately after the concept plan to start the formal plan. Eight months is the minimum. It wouldn't surprise me if it took us a year to do it all just because things take a long time. If, if it took us two months to do the concept and then it was say another two months before we actually got released to do the formal site plan, we're at four and then it takes eight to get it actually all designed and permitted, that's a year. So, so my thoughts, eight month minimum, 12 months would be more realistic, okay? Uh, any questions? Yes, Vice Mayor. Thank you for the explanation. It was a detailed explanation, so I appreciate that, but nobody has fuzzy memories like it wasn't too late. Or, um, you said uh, one thing about, you know, looking at the um, conceptual, we have residents there, so I really want to make sure that whatever we're doing, that we're good neighbors to the residents that have lived there for generations, right. the Powell's in particular. I mean, it was right there on both sides of this property. Um, you did say something and I did read it um, when I was looking this over the other day, um, day whenever. Uh, it says on a uh, paragraph C, County understands that the city has selected a modular constructed building for the police station. Um, I didn't know we had come to a conclusion about that, unless I'm forgetting something. I, I mean, no, you're, you are correct. Okay, okay. You're, I'm, I'm just making correct. sure I wouldn't lose my mind. Okay. Off that was off. heavily discussed, but you are absolutely correct. Okay. No, no, council has not made a decision on Okay, so I just okay. want to make sure that okay. y'all remember sure that that is not something that we have. I, I personally, if I, I mean, I love you, but personally, if, <laughs> personally, if I had my choice, that would not be my choice of um, building. Um, I would maybe look to y'all to um, guide us in what a, a a building of a police station should be like. I mean, that would be my question to y'all, what you would recommend as a structure. I'm trying to, again, keep in mind that you're spending my money. <laughs> okay. And, and, you know, my neighbor's money. So we want to be as cost effective as possible. However, we need to make sure it's a building that will be there 50 years or 100 years from now, just like when we planned this building. Um, okay. You know, uh -huh. so that's something that I'd like for you to kind of maybe come back and gift us, but a module was not a let's go um, kind of thing. And um, so 
And so you have built other police departments? Is that what I did here? I did the Marion County Jail expansion, okay. which was like $35 million. Dollars. Uh, we we, don't want that much. You don't want to spend that much. <laughs> uh, I, I just completed the evidence building for the Marion County Sheriff's Department. But you got what you need. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. I knew you did, but yeah, I'd like to make a comment, please. Um, perhaps unknown to you, um, our staff through our community of planner was sent an email saying that we were work with working with a conceptual plan done by a uh, a local engineer, Patrick Shepard. Okay. Yeah, that's what we were. That was under our, we were under the impression that you had that concept plan at hand from that. That's what miscommunication there. We can modify the scope and we have uh, an architect we can partner with if you'd like a traditional uh, construction method of value. Let me try to oh, clarify. Yeah. Um, so let me ask a couple questions, maybe it'll help. The plans that are currently being considered, would it make a dip? What difference would it make to you as far as you set doing all the things you're doing, whether it be a modular or if it would just be a brick and mortar building? It doesn't wouldn't, make any difference. Wouldn't change any. Wouldn't change it. Doesn't, doesn't change anything on on our end. Okay. With a modular building, you need to know this. They're they're built up off the ground. All right, so we're going to have to have ramps. To get up to that elevation they're usually about 30 inches high so you know that's the difference uh if we go with the conventional uh type construction we won't be building the, the floor up that high okay all right so th this is good um the reason we have spent so much time talking about a modular is because of the state of construction right now where it seems like everything that's built traditionally takes forever and a day. And talking with some of the companies that are into the modular, they seem to be able to do it so expediently. It has been very attractive to us along with the pricing. So to back up what uh, Vice Mayor has said, although council hasn't made a hard decision on it, uh, we have discussed at length that concept but uh, you know, for for you to think that that's absolutely what has decided, we haven't gotten to that point yet. You know if, if that um, we're still looking at pricing of the building and and things like that. But the way what you're proposing to me seems to be the logical next step to what we need to do. Uh, I actually challenged staff at our last meeting that council had bought the property. Council had X amount of dollars put off to the side. Uh, we pretty much had uh, suggested what we were hoping to do and what we wanted to do. And now it was up to staff to take the information they have and start getting this thing rolling. And I'm quite impressed that in a short period of time, you guys are here with the next step. So apparently they weren't sleeping when I challenged them, right? So um, um, now let me just ask as far as the expense, um, yeah, the, you said there was the three steps, the concept phase, and then the last one was the formal phase. What was the middle? Well, the formal, it was what I was talking about, step two, and permitting. And permitting. Was three. Okay, so your, your fees that you would be charging us, does that include all of those steps, or does that include no. one of the steps, or what no, is it? That's, that's the conceptual plan. The conceptual plan. Yes. And we would also uh, do a, a cost estimate, uh, engineer probable cost, based on that conceptual plan. All right. So then the two steps that would still be unpaid for would be the formal plan site and the permit. That's correct. So what what would you estimate those expenses? I'm sure you can do. What would those expenses be? Uh, I, I don't know off the top of my Could head. Could you get us that? Because I'm sure that would be part of what. Yeah. I'm sure if we were going to do one, we'd probably be considering the next two also. I haven't I haven't looked at those numbers. That What you need to realize, I believe that property's been surveyed because yeah. I saw flagging of the corners. Okay. But the question I would have, what type of survey was done? 
because I'm going to need a survey that has a boundary survey, a topographic survey, that's the contours and the lay of the land, a tree location survey. There's nice trees along the south boundary of that property that we want to save. There was only one tree out in the middle of the site. We'd have to remove that tree. Utility location survey, state plane coordinate survey, and then a hundred foot overlap beyond the boundaries of the property. So has the survey magnet done? I can answer that for you. Yes. No. Okay. <laughs> I didn't think so. I would guess probably a boundary survey. So, so that survey has to be done. Okay. Geotechnical testing has to be done. It has to be done. It's required for permitting with the water management district where we put our drainage swells. That has to be done and it has to be done to their criteria. For instance, what am I talking about? Well, the, the geotechnical testing required for the drainage retention area alone, the borings have to be 10 feet lower than the proposed bottom. So if the pond was three feet deep, they have to be 13 feet deep. There has to be a minimum of two. And if the pond gets over a certain size, then you might need three. We need permeability testing done. How rapid will that soil absorb water? Very and important issue. Do those questions, so, are they answered in the formal, formal state of it? Those yeah, that's okay. all in the form. In the form. Yes, sir. So we have to get proposals from okay. subconsultants to do these other tasks. So I guess the question where I'm going with is if we, if council decides to to hitch our future on this project to you, do you do the you not only can do the concept, but for additional money, you can also do the formal site plan for us. Is that something you do? Yes, sir. And how about the final step, the permit? Is that something you do? Yes, sir. So the question would be is we would not be just only interested in the fee for the conceptual part of it. We would also like to have an idea what step two and step would 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 cost. Not that we would decide to do it all at once, but just to kind of know what we're getting into. Okay. I would hate to have a conceptual plan given to us and pay X amount of dollars and then not know the expense of the next two steps and be surprised that the expenses are far exceeding what we're expecting. Right. And then there's something else I didn't tell you. Geotechnical testing for the pond, for the drainage, I did talk about that. But you also need in my recommendation to you, if we're going to build a building out there. You need testing done for the building. Geotechnical testing. What type of testing? Well, it's called standard penetration test. It's not just a boring in the ground. There's a standard method that they use to test for foundation design. And that needs to be determined by your structural engineer. Gotcha. Okay. So... All of these other things need to be incorporated and in, so you understand what you're getting into. I was I was told strictly a concept plan. That's it. Okay, so, well, uh, it's actually me being engaged with your presentation and trying to think, okay, where are we going from that? So the one thing that's clear to me is even if we were in agreement and we were ready to go forward it's your estimation from that day of agreement it would still take eight to 12 months before a shovel would be put in the ground yes sir i appreciate you uh laying it out there like that uh, it's hard to get someone who can just flat lay it there for you to understand well, I've, I've seen it so often people don't understand what we're getting into and they're, they're thinking weeks while we're thinking months. So this, whether it be a modular, with the modular concept has been kind of brought to our attention, it would be something that could be done rapidly. But still, what you're saying to do these three steps, whether it's modular or brick and mortar, it's still going to take 
this. So the idea that we'd have a police station good to go in six months from today, it ain't happening. It's not happening, no, sir. Okay, thank you. I, I mean, I, I sincerely, thank you. I, I think you've really answered a ton of questions for, for us. Yes, Ms. Kenny. Well, I hate to be redundant uh, in terms of my opinion on this particular issue, but I think I will restate it once more. We are going to be having an election. We're going to be having a campaign. We're going to be talking to our residents and find out even more what their opinions happen to be. And for us to make a decision with this council, when we know in a very short time, there'll be people that will have to exercise in all likelihood, uh, whatever our decisions are. So I think it is in our interest to uh, take this kind of a very important addition to a to, uh, council that will be seated for four years. Just my opinion. Any other comments? Yes, Ms. Jen. I have a question. Yeah. Um, the, the second phase of the project. Yes, ma'am. That could be funded through grant. Am I correct? I design, correct. design and permitting can be included in a grant application. Yes, that is correct. Okay. And the information we would gather during the concept plan phase would give us the info we need for mm -hmm. those applications. Okay, thank you. So well, we, we've challenged our staff to do is find that, but we can't, they can't get grants if they don't have the staff, information. Staff has responded to the challenge very well. Thank you very much. Um, just to throw this out, this is you kind of we're all being forced to think in real time. So if we did the concept phase, which is what we need would need for a grant or an appropriation from the state, we'd have to have at least that. Then to go to the second phase, which would be the formal site plan, if we were counting on a grant or an appropriation for state, then there would be that's a delay in it within itself, yes, sir. That right? Be... That's a delay within it. So that could be six months to a year. Yes, sir. There would be an additional six months to a year on top of the time frame that Joe gave you. Mm -hmm. okay. So whatever that grant application time frame is. Thank you. That'd be for the next election. <laughs> yeah. That's why, that's why that, and, 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 and to Ms. Kinney's point, that's why I, I and I've said this as well, is that you can't stop just because there's an election coming because there's always another election coming. So we have to keep going forward. And, you know, otherwise our four, you know, our forefathers would never have read a declaration. So that's why I just want to keep on going. Okay, Ms. Odom, no, I think, do you have? I don't think that the idea that we wouldn't be keeping on would be relevant because you definitely would be keeping on. You would just be keeping on with people who were making the decision and would be seated for four years. Nothing is going to change the direction so miss odom um uh, if council wanted to consider this do we know enough yet to put it on the agenda for monday yeah the, he would just sign this idea that they presented we could we would have a motion on the agenda for you to the mayor be authorized to sign the idea and it would be open for discussion debate public comment oh. vote yeah. Yes, okay, sir. so that's kind of where we're at. But uh, if I can speak for myself, I I would appreciate um, on top of the contract that we're going to be looking at for the concept part of it to at least be given an idea what the final two phases are going to cost. Uh, the, the, the city really runs lean and mean and oh. dollars are scarce. So like 20,000 or 25,000 to some people, some cities is not a big deal. To us, that is a big deal. So if, if you could help us, like you have, you, you walked us through day one to the end. And if you could give us an idea about the total expenses ballpark, we'd appreciate that. Okay. If you can. I'll have to get with the surveyor, get a proposal from them, geotechnical. That's not then I'll get back answer. and get it all written down for you. No. Well, and like I say, it it won't be to the accuracy of Miss Jan Smith. It doesn't need to be. <laughs> uh, 
And just just get it within five thousand, ten thousand, whatever. Uh, and you know, because right now I'm I, when I'm look, I don't know if we're looking at ten thousand, twenty five thousand, forty thousand. I don't have an idea what it is where this is leading to. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, can I please yes. for a little bit of clarification so that we're on the same page? Um, uh, according to uh, Chief McQuay and his recommendation, he had expressed uh, wanting the type of building that Mr. Patrick Shepard came in and uh, did a presentation for. And so my question, I guess, to you would be, um, is there a different price on the proposal for this concept plan um, if we do do it based on that idea, on the modular idea, and on the regular construction idea? It's all the same on our, our part. So it's all the same? All the same. Okay, thank you, clarify you. That. Okay, thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, it, it was worth the price of admission listening to you. Thank you. Okay, we uh, continue on. Um, so we have a consensus to put that on a regular agenda for Monday? Yes, 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 for sure. Thank you. We are finished with item number six on the agenda. Now we go to number seven, which is the department head reports. Ms. Odom, you can call them in the order that you think that. Uh, sure, Mayor. I, um, I'll go first. Um, we have uh, just a heads up, there's a uh, recurring proclamation for Constitution Week that we get a request for every year um, in September um, for the from the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, so that will be on your agenda for Monday uh, as a consent item <clears throat> because there won't be a presentation. We'll just be mailing it to them. And not to ruin the surprise, but we will have a special presentation for Mrs. Hilton on Monday. So don't forget to be here on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> and I did get a report from Mr. Coolyard at Marion County <clears throat> that the agreement between the, city, uh, the county and FGUA for the utility work to be done at Blue Run Park for the restroom project um, is going before the Florida County Commissioners on September 20th for consideration. And I'll give it up to any, 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 any. Go ahead, Troy. Did you say Troy? Yeah. All right. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite part. All right, Council, real quick, just a couple of uh, uh, quick updates. One, the Blue Cove paving project is 100% complete and under final observation for 30 days before final uh, retainage is released on that project. Ohio Street and Cedar Street project, it has uh, obtained substantial completion and a lacking on just a few items of touch up and correction should be finished up within a week and a half to two weeks, weather providing and uh, I can see that there's a lot of people already using the on-street parking we've added. So that was a great addition. All right. We have um, located a contractor who has met with me here at City Hall and agreed to repair the fountain up front, has offered us a price to have it done. We can hopefully have this accomplished before the end of this budget year. Um, we're just waiting to hear back from him shortly after my meeting with him, him and his uh, family. Um, when is the end of the budget year? The end of this month. I just September want to make 30. sure what year you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> this year, September 30th. However, uh, the contractor's under the weather and his family does, uh, a couple of family members uh, apparently got COVID, but we're waiting to hear back from him. Okay. <laughs> All right, very positive things. Um, one sad thing I have to report to council is that a large tree at Ernie Mills Park has sustained some damage as a result of one of our weekend storms a couple of weekends ago. Uh, along with the, the age of the tree and the damage in which it sustained, it has been recommended that we have to remove the entire tree. And it just so happens it's the largest holly tree on the site right at the 
entrance of Ernie Mills Park. So sure, if we uh, let me try and see if I can get as a replacement. That won't be large, but let me see if I can get a um, holly tree replacement. That'll be that'll be great. That allow yeah. I'm just making sure if it's donated. Don't want to get any trouble. Well, if it's it's a, is it a solicitation or how are, how would you go about it? Huh? It's something we could talk about. It, it depends on if you're soliciting a if you're asking for a donation from a company that the city is currently doing business yes, with yeah, or, or not. That, that owns a nursery that's actually going out of business. That may be fine. We could we okay. could talk about the details. I don't and, know right. So council, just to, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Uh, just to follow up on that. Um, because of the two big events happening in October, we have the music festival and we have the bike Florida event occurring right there at Ernie Mills. We will have, try to have that tree down before the first week of October. So contracts already been selected and received a quote on it. So hopefully that'll be taken care of. Um, but in addition to that, at Ernie Mills Park, our volunteers have been working with our staff members during regular business hours to get the, the uh, park in great shape for the October events coming up and in preparation of uh, springtime uh, for new plants and vegetation and stuff around the park. So just want to give a shout out to our volunteers and thank them. We have another work uh, day coming up. We had to move it out to the 22nd of September. So, okay. Um, other than that, I think that's it for department updates and public works. Unless council has any questions. Thank you, Tom. That's it. That's it. Um, just one quick question for you. When we have our big events at Ernie Mills Park, um, it's a good time to, you know, I'm a big light guy. It's a good time to check all the lights, make sure they're all functional when we. Show I look at them every morning. When we show they... off the city, we want those lights shining bright and every yep. bulb working, right? Every one of them is still working since we switched out to the LEDs. Okay. Now that I say that, there'll be a lightning strike this weekend and I'll be changing bulbs, but they are working. Yes, sir. I'll be out there at five tomorrow morning to see if those lights are working. Well, you better have their breakfast Friday then. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ms. Odom. Uh, go ahead, Jen. I have nothing. Okay, Georgina. Um, just wanted to advise that uh, Mr. Martin Megan, uh, one of our alternate members for the historic board, uh, has expressed his desire to resign. So we're going to have to um, address that and hopefully advertise for that uh, position. Um, and I do ask counsel that if you have some time, uh, include him in your prayers. Um, apparently, there's some health issues with both him and his wife. So it would be great if you can add him to your prayers. I'll just send him our best and thank you. Well, and um, I just wanted to give you an update on the software for planning, permitting, and, and code enforcement that we are in the process of implementing. Uh, we've gone through the implementation process. We're heading to the training and practicing phase. And uh, they just advised me that uh, most probably it's going to be uh, coming live sometime by the end of October. So we're looking good so far. <laughs> Thank you. That's it. Quick well, question with that new program. As a realtor, will I be able to call you up and say, hey, um, this house? Because, sure. you know, when you look on Marion County property records, it doesn't show a lot of times the MLM permits that have been done. That's why we always call you and bother you. Um, will this program be allow us to either go on as, as citizens or realtors to see if permits were pulled for the air conditioning or whatever? Well, there's we're going to definitely be able to, to uh, run the address and every permit, code enforcement issue, anything okay. that comes up is going to come up under that address. So it's going to be very user friendly. Um, I would have to ask and see if there's a way that we can have uh, some type of access for, um, I, I, I would think it's just the same, um, staff uh, related. So I know when Mary Payne go on, type in the 
whatever address, cross our account number, it pops up all the uh, all the uh, permits. So I just didn't know if we were going to have yeah. something like that. I, I believe that would have to be more of a record. Okay, that's know, fine. Public record kind of does. Uh, active, but thank you. Sure. But easier for you to look up, regardless. Absolutely, <laughs> very much easier. <laughs> and that's it for community development. Very quick, Ms. Odom. <laughs> Chief, I'm good. Does that cover? Does that cover everyone, Ms. Odom? That's it. That's it. All right. We're done with agenda item number seven. Now we move to agenda item number eight for those of you that are following. It's resolution 2022-08, the established new general fund reserve. And I believe this is Ms. Smith. Thank you. Um, I was asked to... Um... Uh, Councilwoman Hanchar asked that I bring this back before you all. It was discussed at the August 22nd budget workshop to move forward to the first workshop, uh, to the first budget workshop in September for approval. And I was, it, it fell silent, which means, you know, there was no vote to bring it back. But Councilwoman Hanchar asked that I bring this back. So I'm presenting this again. Uh, based on discussion and funds that have been earmarked this current year for the new police facility. Um, I'm asking that we reserve these funds so that they're not used for any other purpose um, unless to establish by resolution a new fund to move those monies that have been um, identified for the police facility into its own fund via resolution whereby if they are deemed not needed at any point in the future, it can be unresoluted. So I'm just trying to protect and tie up those funds for the um, near future. Okay, I finish? Yes. Okay, yes, Vice Mayor. Quick question. So like this evening, we had the gentleman come and speak to us just now from Kimberly Horn, and they said they need $8,000 to do the preliminary. Mm -hmm. So, we would pull the $8,000 from this fund. If that's what council wants me to do, absolutely. Right. So, and, and this, and, and Mr. Mayor, this is where my kind of thought is, and, and Tim, you're a great one for doing a plan, seeing it, in, seeing it out in, in writing. So if you know you have 700,000, I know it's 600 and something, but we're just going to go even numbers. So we, can. So we have 700,000, right? And... Now we have a nice ledger, mm -hmm. lack of a better word, but a ledger, mm -hmm. standing in my daddy's handwriting, and now we've got 8000 taken out of that ledger mm -hmm. for just that police department. Mm -hmm. Then we get the next um, thing with Bob. They were saying step number two. Um, now we're going to take okay. 30000 from that ledger. Mm -hmm. This, to me, is that type of... I mean, this presentation almost proves why having something like this where you have those funds set aside for a project that we're very 100% trying to get done. Mm -hmm. And we have where everybody can see, everybody always wants clarification, transparency of where these funds are coming from and how we're spending them. This to me makes 100% perfect sense that you have a ledger, you're seeing exactly where those funds are coming from, mm -hmm. from which account, so there's never anybody saying, well, you took it from the wrong account or you or what or what was the meaning of that expense? So that's why it just makes perfect sense to do something like this. I just have a question for Andrew or anybody that knows this answer, because I don't. When it comes to establishing a resolution at a certain dollar amount to periodically withdraw funds from a new reserve, does the resolution need to be amended or do I just keep track? Um, via our financial system of that with of the, those withdrawals, like I do with other reserve capital reserves. Now, it's an um, um, a resolution established the reserve, not at a at a specific cost. <coughs> excuse me, that has changed over the course of many years. But when, in our budget, when we designate to use 
funds from that capital reserve, I'm making entries as we expense those funds. Would it be the same situation with this? Or would we need to amend the resolution for each withdrawal? I don't believe so. That's more of a finance question. Okay. Uh, so we can double check that. I can work with you on that. Okay. But but off the top of my head, I mean, that's that's, that's not something I could really answer. It's it's not. Okay. I I a, I want to want to say no. We won't have to amend the resolution. I just need to keep track and report to council the balance in the reserve, like I do quarterly with all our reserves. Yeah, and it seemed like you could put that wording in there, like section number four would state that you would do a periodic withdrawals. Oh, okay. I'll think as council... needed toward the project. Yeah. yeah that's and, awesome. and, and that's I will awesome. absolutely add something like that. If you want to move forward with this resolution, because I think, <laughs> I think conceptually, that's what you're saying. This money is earmarked for the project. It's for the project. Yes. And it doesn't necessarily say it has to be spent all at once. No. Uh -huh. So I guess. You have the liberty to spell, mm -hmm. spell, spend it on the project as need be. That's correct. Yes. Uh, Miss Penny, did you want to make a comment? Well, uh, I, I get this coming back after we voted, which I thought that the uh, vote was based not on the fact that we don't have designated monies, but that the amount of the designated monies for the project, we wanted to be sure it was protected but we wanted to demonstrate to the state or whoever we're going to ask to give us a grant that we have a sufficient amount in to ask for a grant, but mm -hmm. not to put it in so totally that we don't get some kind of grant assistance. Is that not what yeah, you, you did? Yeah, you, you, you got it. Yeah. Uh, to, to summarize, I believe Correct. the motion was a 2 2 tie, which meant nothing could happen. And Vice Mayor Hanshaw wanted rightfully to continue when we had a full council. So mm -hmm. it's here again. So here, here was my point. I see absolutely nothing wrong with earmarking some of them. Mm -hmm. So to my point is we just demonstrated that it, in all, all likelihood, it's gonna push two years before we're gonna see a shovel in the ground based on what he said, right? So where I'm at with it is how much money do we need to earmark without unnecessarily tying up money that we need right now? There's a lot of things we could be doing right now. So to say we're gonna put $600,000 off to the side, knowing that we might nibble at it as Vice Mayor uh, pointed out, but for the most part, all that money is just going to be iced, not to be touched. When we might find out at a later date that all we needed was two hundred fifty thousand for a match on a, a grant or three hundred, so we'll have projects undone, not done that could have been done if we had the money. So if if someone said to me, we absolutely have to have that entire amount sitting there because this is what we're gonna need, then fine. But if someone, if, if someone would say, we don't need that much money earmarked, this is what we need to protect our, our police station concept, then by all means, let's recirculate the money into some projects. So that's, that's where I'm at. I was recently told that the match requirement for grants, the gold standard is now becoming a 50% match versus Ooh. versus the 25%. I'm just throwing that out there. I'm Ooh, not saying- told you that? Mr. Gary, uh, Mr. Alan Gary. Well, then that would justify keeping it all because we were, the number we keep throwing out is a million two. Mm -hmm. So if we were gonna try to come up with the difference, well, let, let, let's think about that. Now, let's let's walk that through. Let's say the project's a million five, all right? Mm -hmm. And we get a grant for 900,000 because we already have 600,000. So it's a, a million five project, we get a grant for 900,000 and we add to it the 600,000. 
in order to get the 900,000, if we needed a 50% match, that'd be $450,000, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's my point. You know, my point is tying up money. And so even at your highest number, 50%, seems like 600,000 would exceed what we need to make a 50% match. Then maybe we should wait until if council approves Kimley Horn to move forward with the concept plan and to prepare an opinion of probable cost, maybe that's what we really need to wait on to see what do they truly estimate this project to cost from, from, for in its entirety and then decide how much to earmark. Maybe that's the way we need to look at this. And maybe, well, there, there's no maybe it's less. Right now that I think wants to dive into that 600,000. Okay, right. I, I'm, right. I'm no, whatever so, you direct. But if you said to me, what's the perfect scenario? Perfect scenario would be council, we need to have 400,000 there. And I think safely we can release 200,000 to use on other projects and the 400,000 we earmark and that protects us for our matches and whatever. So that, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But what, what we're coming down to is we're going to, Put six hundred thousand off to the side, basically, basically because we don't know how much we're going to need. And well, that's why I'm saying don't do anything. Better. That's why I'm saying don't do anything now. Wait until we do get an opinion of probable cost, because what if what if? And no, nobody on staff likes my what ifs. <laughs> but being a realist, what if the project is two million between permitting design? And construction. What if it comes in at two million, and we need a fifty percent match for a grant? That means we need a million dollars to match a two million dollar. That makes sense to me. Okay, mm -hmm. so I can see waiting until you know if you're going to move forward. That's only if you're going to move forward with with the. So if it was if we needed two million, we have we, we would have six hundred. We have six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So that means. What we need for a grant would be a million four. The grant would have to make up the difference between what we have and if if, if the so if it's a two million dollar project and we have six hundred thousand, we need a million four grant. No, for, no. we would need four hundred thousand. If it, depending on how much the match requirement yes. is, yeah, okay, so the city would have to come up with a million dollars. So fifty percent match on a million. Uh, on a two million dollar project would would, would be six hundred seventy thousand six hundred thousand. Yeah, I got it. I, I know what you're saying. So you know, and we're we're guessing. We've been guessing at how much this project really truly is going to cost all along. So that's why I've presented the six hundred thousand that is still available from from monies that have been earmarked for police or used for police. It is up to council to tell me, you know, how much do you want to set aside? I'll, I'll do whatever council directs, but we're still guessing. Right. Bottom line, we're still guessing. Ms. Kenny? I think she's making a very good point that we need to find out what we think the closest possible price mm -hmm. would be. And these are the people, the Kimberly Martin people that we're talking to. And so if, you're suggesting do not move forward with the resolution until we get those numbers? Correct. And if you wanted to, okay, since reserves can be decreased, based on council's direction, we could set aside this money, these monies right now, just to earmark them. And at a future date, when we find out what we need, this can be reduced at council's direction. It's not fixed or, or increased. If Where needed. is the money right now? It's sitting in two separate reserves. 365,000 has been earmarked from the one cent sales tax now for a couple of years. So that's sitting in the one cent sales tax reserve. The balance of the 600,000 is just sitting in unrestricted operating. Okay. Our, our, our bank account, our, che oops, our checking account, basically, because I have not been directed to move it anywhere else. And that's the balance of the proceeds from the sale of the church. Mm -hmm. So it, they're separate right now, they're not protected. The one cent sales tax is protected to a certain extent because that can only be used for police, fire, or roads and street. But sitting in unrestricted, it can be spent on any purpose that council deems necessary. 
So what you talk about when it's protected, it's protected from the greed of counsel, right? I'm not going <laughs> to speak to that. <laughs> but but in, 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 let's make sure that I understand. If we came up tomorrow and we had an emergency and we voted on this and we said yes, and that $241,000 was sitting there, just for the police department, we had some emergency and that's how much money we needed to fix the blob. Mm -hmm. We could do a quick resolution and get it back out of there and fix the blob. I'm not so sure it would even need to be a resolution well, other than just a direction that I withdraw those funds from the reserve and move them to another fund. I mean, another reserve to be spent. Ms. Cubbage, do you have any input on, on this? Sure, on this issue. But I just want council to know there's flexibility. Yeah. Nothing is going to be set in stone, yeah. but it's going to be documented History. for historically what has been done. Now, just so you know, I have kept a ledger off book of the monies that have been spent on this project. So there is documentation, you know, including all the surveys and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but this resolution ties up what we know to exist at this point that could be used for this project. Oh, we can't vote on this. Any last uh, comments? It'll certainly be on the agenda for I would, like, yeah, I would like to have it back on the agenda for Monday night for potential vote and discussion, please. We have a second. No, we don't have a second. Don't need okay, <laughs> okay. Vote, yeah. so <laughs> by uh, Vice Mayor, and make, making that request, it is on the agenda. So, uh, I just my comment on it. I, there's there's not a lot of downside to it because the council can just undo it very That's, simply. Mm -hmm. yeah. So mm -hmm. it's it's almost a statement. That's all. It's just a paperwork trail. It is basically what it is. Uh, okay. It's uh, sodium. You have that going to be on the agenda all right now we move to uh number nine i'm very looking forward to this one the boat launch program Ms. smith again um yes sir mr mayor um you asked that staff come back to you with a recommendation after the presentations that were given um and staff is recommending safe park safe park was the company that um was out of ocala locally owned and I've given you the reasons why um, it was they were chosen. Locally owned and operated. So any issues with a kiosk, they can be here within 40 minutes, maybe. Um, a flat rate for the annual support. So there's no percentage of earnings or anything like that. Um, installation, software, training, and shipping are all included in the cost of the kiosks. The other companies separated them out. And as I um, provided the matrix on the other companies, you can see what really what was included and what wasn't. Um, the camera, the LPR enforcement camera is provided at no extra cost. And um, as was presented, Officers can receive text notifications if somebody doesn't pay and their license plate is captured and the officer probably would have to drive around a little while to find the vehicle, but maybe in the course of just patrolling, they would spot it and be able to um, possibly issue a warning if council didn't want to do citations. We still have to do an ordinance to establish this program. So there's still a lot of things that need to take place. Um, another reason uh, for this company, 24-7, 365 dedicated staff support. If there's an issue, there's a phone number right on the kiosk. If a user needs assistance, if city needs assistance, there's that support. The kiosk can be hardwired or solar powered. So solar power, um, maybe no cost to the city. That's more of a Troy um, item. Uh, deployment. Deployment was a big one. Most of the other companies, eight to 12 weeks. Safe park, 21 days from an executed agreement and a deposit. So that's three weeks. And most of all, they were the least cost to the city. So unless you have other thoughts on another company, um, Safe Park is staff's recommendation. And so what we're asking is to um, 
start to prepare an ordinance to implement this program. Um, fees would be probably implemented via resolution. So we would need to you know, discuss what kind of fees you would like to see. Um, so maybe for the next work, the next workshop in October, we could maybe uh, present at least the beginnings of a draft ordinance for discussion and maybe a draft agreement with Safe Park. Again, we can't execute an agreement until we have the ordinance in place. So you're looking at if we can get an ordinance, um, maybe first reading in October, that may be pushing it, but let's just say October 2nd in November, we could possibly execute the agreement at the second reading of an ordinance, of the ordinance, and maybe by December have something in place. Otherwise, you may be looking at January. No. So, um, but that is staff's recommendation if council is amenable to it. Um, um, just a comment before we get to that. Uh, I think it's very, very important for us to work really hard to try to get this done before we get into the next season. Absolutely. Right. So even after the new year and the cold parts of January, February, that, that would be a good time to put it in where we have it. A soft yeah, layer. A disaster for this thing would be for it to just somehow drag out. Right. And now we're trying to put it into play in June sure. of next year. Mm -hmm. you know? So, um, well, so um you might want to consider too um whenever remember when we talked with uh Christian River or Citrus County, they did a little bit of a grace period, mm -hmm. like a month or two, to allow people to get used to it being there and not get charged a, a penalty or a fine if they didn't pay, just something yeah. to consider if you're going to um because they sort of were on that same timeline they they started in the cold months mm -hmm. and then that first couple of months um <laughs> just to allow everybody to get used to the fact that they were going to have now does the kiosk give you a ticket that you put in your... no, no we okay. won't go with the paper okay because uh is it really necessary other than it creating litter it, there i think there's a my opinion is just there's a greater chance of litter um versus them keeping that as a receipt for payment when they can receive a receipt for payment via text okay. so, so there's a way this for them would be something to we really need to discuss with chief because this is going to put a lot of enforcement mm -hmm. on him mm -hmm. and just looking for a a stub on a windshield or on a dashboard compared to trying to find a license plate that's scattered within 50 vehicles mm -hmm. um we can a, that's going to be a challenge we can have that too we can have paper um <laughs> receipts well, if if council I, desires i, I can't that. speak for chief he's a big boy he can speak for himself but if i was patrolling the parking lot i would certainly like to see mm -hmm. a piece of paper rather than individually mm -hmm. You know, trying to find the uh, mm -hmm. the license. I thought, I thought the presentation said it was like they was had it like a um like a ledger that is set the police would have on their cell phones and they could drive by because otherwise we're gonna have to get out and look at the at the windshield at the windshield and said they could drive mm -hmm. by and say okay yep there's that one. Mm -hmm. Yep, well, Chief, I think, Chief, you, you need to come up here and give us your opinion on this, because this is going to lay right on your shoulders. If we're going to do this, we're going to expect it to be enforced and enforced aggressively. So let's get this. Well, hopefully, if they had put a boat in the water, there's no boat on the trailer. So we should be able to see the vehicle's license plate as we ride by. So I, I don't have any problems with it being on the license plate and that's what the camera would be capturing is the license plate okay so the way it's going to go down is your department's text that there's a violator and you're going to be text it's going to text mm -hmm. the license number of the violator how how will, how will the police know I, that I have to ask exactly. It would have to just be by license because I, the their system isn't going to pull up registration information. It would be the license tag. Where, so, uh, where I'm speaking as an advocate for for the chief mm -hmm. is if he's if it's going to be on his shoulders to enforce, mm -hmm. then the easier it is to identify the, the violator, mm -hmm. uh, the better. Which if 
Okay, now I'd have to ask the que the, the company that those questions, but let me ask you a question. If you're uh, if you receive a text that a license and you receive a license plate, a tag, picture of a tag, um, and that's all the information you receive, would you then find it um, inconvenient to to get that the registration information as far as um, it should be the trailer that is the license plate and not the vehicle? I I think it should be the, the vehicle. vehicle tag. Okay. Okay, because which you can I borrow not a boat sure. from anybody. You can rent a boat, mm -hmm. but it should be attached mm -hmm. to the vehicle. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and we should be able to get a report, say 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. full of report. There's 10 vehicles. We should be able to go through the parking lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that is what they do provide as right. far as the picture. I'll have to find out because I know some of the presenters had said it would be difficult to, to take a picture of the vehicle because yeah. of the boat. boat. So I, uh, these are questions I can ask to get more clarity. Well, um, the, the boat, the car that's attached to the boat mm -hmm. would get the citation. Yes. If yes. They were illegal. Okay. Let me let me just double check on on what the camera takes a picture of um, to get clarity on that. Okay. I have a question. But I and I think any of the companies that have these cameras are going to be in the same situation. If there's difficulty capturing a picture of the vehicle, maybe because a boat is on a trailer, I really, I, I really don't have an answer for that. Okay, Miss Cubbage. Yeah, how are we going to secure the area so that people know they have to come in this one entranceway where the kiosk is? Because as as our as it is out there now, you can come in through that entranceway and come around and park and they wouldn't be coming in from 41. So are we gonna have to have a, a gate there or signs that direct them to come in? The kiosk so where's the kiosk gonna be located at exactly? The ramp. At, at the, the ramp. ramp. Yeah. Okay. And there's only one entrance. If they come in this way, they're coming in illegally. Right, unless you're- And speaking. they would still come down to the ramp. Okay. So they have and to they come have, to the ramp to get to the kiosk. And they have come through this parking lot. Yes, they and have. And gone the wrong way. Right. But they're still going the same direction down to the ramp. Right. Around that circle. Got it. So they're not going to be able to miss the kiosk and any signage that we have that says stop and pay right. or whatever the signage may say. So stopping them from coming through this parking lot illegally, people get confused. We, you know, we yeah. have arrows. Yeah but they still go through so yeah. i'm not so sure you know that'll stop everybody but they'll still be directed where to go to pay okay, okay. got it uh, miss odom let's put this on the agenda for the next workshop and what? do you think we can have an ordinance ready for october for i think so the the ordinance that would it wouldn't establish all the details of the user fee program. Essentially, it would just establish the basics, what the money can be used for. Um, I don't even believe that you need to actually have the fee. I think we can do that by resolution, but right. it just needs to be a mm -hmm. short, you know, paragraph mm -hmm. that says, hey, we're doing this. Council can do it. And this is what the money can be used for. And then once the ordinance is in place, then we can work. We can get the um, okay. fee resolution figured out, Excuse me. establish the fee, because we would need to do that before we entered into an agreement, correct? Presumably, since ultimately, I believe they'd be compensated in some form, you know, via what the city's charging, right? Yeah. So we should be prepared to discuss fees. Yes. At the workshop okay. in October. Okay. I have some ideas on that. So, so count just one more thing, Mr. Mayor. So because we'd be entering into this after the next budget, you know, when the new budget year starts, technically October 1, um, and we'd need to pay for the equipment. I would like consensus for me to put this item in the budget for next year based on the costs. Now they may change a little bit, maybe with an agreement, possibly, I don't know, I, I don't think so, but based on their proposal, I put those dollars in the budget as a capital expenditure. If council 
you know, is agreeable to that. That way it's in the budget. We don't have to worry about a budget amendment. The funds are coming from because these this would come from the general fund capital reserve. Everybody good with that? I mean, would you want like fourteen thousand? Uh, and the the cost that I have here, the thirteen thousand six hundred and fifty. So maybe rounded to fourteen just to be safe. If it's not used, it stays in the reserve. Yeah, but well, I think it'd be a good idea. Well, I'm making changes good. anyway right now. Uh, how, how would you so like, how would you like it? And it would go in, in Troy's park and rec budget. <laughs> well, and, and even to go in, well, if you do 14000 that would maybe include um, a sign that says kiosk over there to go get it. You know, I mean, it might pay for the sure. $200 sign. I might have to pay sure. for it. Jan, thank you so much. You put a lot of effort in this and you whittled it down from a uh, very big conceptual idea to well, we've got something. Thank you very much. You're welcome. It has been a staff, uh, you know, combined effort. So and, uh, I can't take all the credit. I want to repeat to you your informal survey that you did finding out who's using the ramp. I thought that was a, uh, that moved the needle. Mm -hmm. And it was actually what I was hoping that it demonstrated the ramps being used by non-city residents. Mm -hmm. So almost 90, 95% of the time, which they're using our facilities. They're using the river. They're using our parking lots. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I guarantee those five that said they wouldn't come back will be back. Yeah, and not contributing to uh, what they're using. So that, that gives me a lot of comfort. Okay, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. We go to number 10, uh, Ordinance 2022-077, the non-conforming signs. And is that you, Mr. Han? Yes, sir. And I can address both at the same time and hopefully move through this pretty quick. Um, we had discussed this, and um, if you have any questions, feel free to jump in. Uh, but we had discussed this a, a bit before, and I'm, I'm just going to revisit um, some of the highlights. Uh, I know this may be the first time some of you are seeing it. It's been through the Planning Commission for a few months, so some of you may be very well versed and familiar with it. Um, and uh, this will not be coming before you until at least October. So if uh, some of you aren't familiar with it and you have questions for me, I can address everything at the next workshop. Uh, but uh, you have two ordinances. The first one is the comprehensive plan amendment, even though it's numbered 202210, uh, and the other one is 202207. The comp plan amendment must be adopted first. It just was simply uh, uh, the, the 2207, the actual ordinance was just adopted prior to the comprehensive plan amendment. That's just the reason for the numbering. When you look at the comprehensive plan amendment, uh, what um, in going through that and doing a consistency review, what uh, staff and I found is that there are portions of your comprehensive or the city's comprehensive plan, pardon me, that specifically address non-conforming structures. Signs are structures. So uh, nothing is specific to signs, but addresses structures and allows for build backs in the event of natural disasters, um, accidental fires, et cetera. Now, uh, I know that that's not the direction the council wants to go with non-conforming signs, in particular billboards. So that necessitates a comprehensive plan amendment specifically for signage to rules and take that out there where if something is damaged beyond that 50% threshold that, um, that, uh, that it can't be built back if it's a sign. That's the first ordinance. So that one is very simple. The procedure for that one, if that comes back before you in October, you'll have your transmittal hearing. That'll be advertised accordingly from there. And that's public hearing. So there's two public hearings on this one because it is a comp plan amendment. Uh, it goes to DEO and then it comes back to you for adoption. Um, you can do the first reading of the other ordinance in the meantime, contingent on the comp plan, but if the comp plan doesn't move forward, you can't go anywhere with it. Uh, the other ordinance. Seven. Yes. Seven. On that one, just kind of walking you through what that does. There are some general in the beginning. You'll see this is a long ordinance and it's a sign ordinance. Anytime we have a side ordinance, lots of whereas clauses mm -hmm. because of First Amendment protections and addressing those to reduce the risk of any type of litigation. Uh, when we go through and see what um, 
what has been changed here. There are some changes to the definition, definitions to specifically address um, you know, the differences between advertising signs, billboards, et cetera. And the real meat and potatoes is really towards the end. And starting with uh, section 11, 12, you'll see there is, get to the right page here, uh, some additional language regarding billboards, creating for that, creating that potential amortization program, at least allowing for negotiations to discuss taking down a are there three now or I, I forget because we haven't talked about it in two months, five total for the existing ones that remain with a goal of having them taken down within 10 years. Uh, that's the first provision. You'll also see provisions in here that deal with non-conforming signs in general, really incorporating uh, those rules that um, are coming from the comprehensive plan amendments, uh, <coughs> thresholds for damage over 50% and some maintenance requirements in there. Uh, with 1118, there are new specific maintenance requirements that require all signs, including billboards, to be in a certain way. So that's been incorporated into there. There's some uh, a section addressing general violations and the responsibility of the signs owner to conform with these requirements. There is a section here regarding immediate removal of unsafe signs. There is a section here that specifically deals with the removal of abandoned signs, which gives the city more tools to deal with problematic signs within the city limits, whether they're billboards or not. Uh, there is a section here regarding removal of signs erected out of permit and also some severability provisions in case there is any kind of infringement on free speech. That is it. Um, if there are any questions regarding some of the specifics of those, I'm happy to answer them. I will discuss them in more detail at the next meeting. Thank you very much. Well, I think there's been a um, a real vocal, uh, a lot of energy brought toward council to deal with the sign and the signage in the city. Yes. We all know there's signs that are throughout the city that are nasty, <laughs> unused. Um, so I think if we're going to focus on trying to um, spruce up the city. This is going to be some time well spent. Appreciate it. Okay, we counsel the good news is we're, we're past 50% right now. Can I, can I say one thing really quick, Andrew? Yes. Could you speak to procedure when it comes to these two ordinances? Because one of them is going to require two public hearings and one just one because of the transmittal hearing to DCA. Yes, so if it goes in October, you'll have your public hearing for transmittal. And that's on the comprehensive plan amendment. You could also have uh, first reading on the um, on twenty twenty two oh seven, the actual code amendment. Right. But the motion would be that that's contingent upon passage of. It, it's sort of like uh, doing a rezoning along with the comprehensive plan amendment. You can do the rezoning in tangent with it, but. It must be contingent on the comprehensive plan amendment. So and the comprehensive plan, the transmittal hearing, that is for the purpose of sending it to DEO. To DEO. So that'll be advertised and that can happen in October. That is the plan currently. You can also and so and you'll have, have your have first reading on both. 60 days to respond, right? Uh DEO is running right now and they have several months. Um I actually forget because they've been working so much faster than <laughs> There frankly aren't as many rules as there used to be yeah. uh, with, with the changes that we saw, you know, about 10, about 10 years ago now. So I, I think that that turnaround is about what they're coming back at. They're coming for, back pretty quickly. Yeah, I, I know the last comp plan amendment that we did, they, they, their turnaround was really quick. I mm -hmm. think we had it final, everything finalized the following month. Hmm. Yes. So but this is a matter of procedure. I wanted everybody to understand how that process works, that there's, the one ordinance is going to require two public hearings and the ordinance amending the code only requires a first reading and a public hearing. Exactly. Transmittal hearing, everything comes back. If it comes back in time for November, great. If not, December, then you'll have your adoption hearing for the comprehensive plan amendment. And as soon as that's adopted, then council will be all clear to have your second reading and adoption of the code amendment. Okay, thank you very much. We are now at Number 12, the T-Mobile Hometown Grant. Georgina, this is you. Yes, thank you. 
Uh, speak speak loudly into the microphone and keep us awake. <laughs> I'll try to do that. <laughs> and um, this is uh, can you put this video? is going to be a, a very broad. Um, can you put that on the screen. The uh, item list of, okay. of things that I've compiled through speaking with different council members, um, <laughs> and so I came up with a with a broad list of of, of ideas. Uh, but there is one in particular that was brought up by one of our council members, and I want to make sure that that we tackle that one and explain how that is. And I'm going to have Troy interject as soon as I read this so that he can tell you all about that one, because that was a lot more detailed. Um, but um, for the purposes of you all wanting to know the different ideas that we could implement to, to get this grant, uh, the $50,000 grant from T-Mobile hometown. Uh, we had, um, first idea was to create a site for community gatherings at Ernie Mills uh, by providing a stage plot with adequate sitting, a proper sound and sound gear system to include mic, uh, uh, mic stands, mics with monitors, a lighting system, a strong center stage with platforms and risers the chairs and stands for the community to gather for either concerts and movies at the park, those types of events. Uh, the second um, option would be to design and create a dog designated area at Ernie Mills Park with adequate fencing, uh, the park furnishing such as agility equipment, hoof jumps, walking planks, we post stepping paws, doggy crawls, jump over and fall and pause tables. These are these are things that um, I know of a park that's really close to <laughs> my house that has a bunch of these things and I was really surprised to see that. It's 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 really uh, attractive to people for their for the their pups. And so this project would also include essential garbage receptacles for proper disposition of litter and, and so forth. Uh, the third one would be uh, an upgrade to City of New Orleans boat ramp facility to include kayak ramp dock. Um, the possibility, and this is all for you to think about it. The decision is on you. <laughs> I'm just bringing ideas uh, that were gathered from conversations with you. <laughs> Lastly, um, use the funds to upgrade existing playground equipment at both L.O. Robertson, which is very much needing that, right, Troy? Mm -hmm. And um, Ernie Mills Park. Uh, but aside from that, like I said in the beginning, uh, one of the, uh, the council members uh, brought in an idea, and I wasn't present in that meeting, but Troy was, and I want to make sure that we capture that one as well. So, Troy, it's your floor now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, Council. Uh, Georgina, thank you for putting those options on the agenda summary, too, because I think one of the most exciting things is that we have an opportunity now with these local grants coming out, the T-Mobile grants. Uh, I think it was, don't quote me on the date, was it last Monday we met? Monday the 29th, yes. There you go. Okay. Uh, Councilwoman Kovach did come and meet with me and, and uh, Michelle, Jen wasn't there. <laughs> Judy from the, the chamber, yes. And our biggest portion of that conversation was Ernie Mills Park. It seems to be the focus point of our parks right now. It's Ernie Mills. Uh, she talked to us about uh, music at the park, different events, uh, venues that can come to the park. Uh, tents. Shade opportunities, also protection from light rain or drizzles, you know, how we are in Florida. You can be in the middle of a music event and all of a sudden it starts raining. So we talked about chairs, tents. Um, we did talk about different ideas that the park could be used for. But we all agree that these T-Mobile grants have those opportunities available to us. So I think what we really need as staff Georgina and myself is for the council to collectively come together and give us 
one or two options that you would like for us to apply for the grant. And I really um, appreciate Councilwoman Covage's ideas for Ernie Mills Park, because you know that has become my flagship park. I love it. It's right outside my office, but it's getting more and more used. So her ideas with enhancing the park for comfort and feasibility is a great one, but also the uh, kayak launch here at Boat Ramp, you know. So, but with all these grants, nowadays they're a little bit more difficult to apply for. You can't just put a wish list out there, get whatever money, and then make something happen with that money. We pretty much have to have a turnkey ready to go project. We have to have a project budget. We have to have the feasibility to determine, you know, is it is it grant worthy? And so, we have to do a plan um, to right. show, um, especially because some of our um, supporters that are willing to give us letters to to support this idea, they um, they're going to want to see what we're going to be using the money for. So it's really important to show a good plan um, that that this money is going to be used for, and it could be used for things. But we just have to make sure that we're covering your your choices very well. That's right. And the better, you know, the more organized our, our grant writing is with, with having a true plan, a project cost, and showing that the city is putting skin in the game as far as we've already contributed time and energy into it, it enhances our ability to get these grants. Now, the other thing I understand about T-Mobile, and correct me if I'm wrong, but we can apply for these grants every quarter. Yes. So if we pick one project now, by the end of this quarter, we can hopefully submit that grant, but we can immediately designing the next project and the next project and the next project and keep submitting until something is funding or they all eventually get funded. Okay. So I think what we're asking for is some guidance. So what you're asking for after this presentation of these four recommendations is for council to give you an idea which one of these that we would like to consider, or if we have something in addition to, to lay it out there. It would be five. Right. It would be five. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. It would be five in total. Mm. Okay. Mr. Mayor, yeah, I'd like to a um, question that may play into a consideration. Yeah. Is there anything in this grant that says you would be able to charge a fee? Sorry. Is there anything in the grant that would prohibit us from, say, charging a fee? No. Um, as far as to use the facilities, I'm speaking strictly for. Well, the it, there's nothing in the grant about that. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't so, detail the, the the use that far. Okay. So we. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't that's, say. It doesn't say anything about that. But once we get in the process, we're probably going to. I was going to say that's a good question for us to keep track of. Yeah, and as far as a kayak boat launch, I think that's very important because you're charging boaters. You can't exempt kayakers. That's discrimination. I think you're yeah. me if I'm wrong. So if there's a prohibition with this grant, which there probably isn't, but there might be, like you run park. You can check that out, correct? A couple phone calls. Right. As as we start applying for the grants, we'll look at the rules and regulations, the restrictions right, so on the grants. Uh, let's go down the line. I, I know what I would prioritize, uh, Ms. Cubbage. Yeah, give me your first and second choice. Okay. Um, first, I'd like to tell you all more about the grant. No, um, you don't have to do that. Just <laughs> give us your first and we still okay. have nine more. Okay, items. let's go to number one. Okay. Um, we have this beautiful park there, Irving Mills, and anything, invested in put a, putting a lot of parking spaces. Our prayers are with you. Okay, so okay, we, ha we have this already well-developed park that we use occasionally as a community meeting place. And from what I have seen from going to other towns, including, oh, about 12 days ago, I was up in um, Lansing, North Carolina, a little town, 350 people. 
Yes, I know. <laughs> Come on, just but guess tell what? Your, tell 350 your people, and they had a tent and they had a, a bandstand like we do, and they charged admission. Okay, we have Judy Terwillinger, who is very excited about the idea of making some improvements to Ernie Mills that our business people could benefit from as well as a community because here's the situation. We have people come here to town again and again. And if they come and they eat at one of our eateries, they get up and they go home. We have no place else to go for them after they dine. Thank you. Okay. Let's entertain them as well as our local community. And how does that benefit our community? One, it provides entertainment and a pl gathering place for, for our community members. Uh, it gives our visitors an opportunity to stay here longer. Okay, come into town after they kayak. We got it, bike. Dan. Okay, okay. Yeah, number one is your choice. What's number, number one what's is my choice. What's your second choice? Okay, here, here's the and point. And we don't need, we don't need a 10 minute to screw. Just tell us what your choice is. My second choice, again, I would go with anything that benefits our community first. What's and your... I would say there's a lot of people that are kayaking. And if we give people another, uh, a, be a better place to put in a kayak on our not so busy river with the Coochie, that would definitely be number two. So uh, Troy, Miss Councilwoman Covage, her, her prioritized choices are one and three. Miss Will. I definitely cannot see a dog designated here in this part because I just don't see one designated. I can't hear you. Oh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. Oh, y'all can't hear me, my mouth is not. I'm surprised at that. But like, anyway, I was saying I can't see a dog designated area at Ernie Mills Park because I think it's too small. Okay. Exactly. So which one? So I would rather number, number one. one. Number one. Mm -hmm. What's your second choice? What's your second? My second choice would be where is L.O. Robinson Park? That's over there by Bucks. Number four. Yeah. L.O. Robinson Park is by the water tower out 40. That's a small quite park. That that is quite a bit of time. What about number three? Number three? Yeah, that's okay. okay. So we got one and three. All right. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd get one, three, and if I, if I could get an extra, I'd do number four. We just need to know where to get started. Because we can write as many of these grants until the project stop until the grants stop coming. Mm. It's twenty five million dollars total giveaway, and it's available every quarter. So it's not going to be all for us, but <laughs> it may not be. Yes, yeah. Which we can get some but for the police department. We'll. <laughs> okay. you do it right. Um, <laughs> just so you know, Troy and. Uh, Regina, my choice would be number, the first one would be number three, the boat ramp. I think it goes with everything we're talking about. If you go back there and look, we have terrible erosion going on right now with the number of kayaks that are being used, especially commercially now. And whether it's doable or not, we've all already heard several times from people, and I think it would utilize Ernie Mills. <laughs> if, it, if it was possible, to put a dog park there would give people a reason to go there. So my choices would be three and two. Three and two. Okay. All right. Okay. So you, you got uh, Thank you. That, that helps. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Troy. You're welcome. Sorry, I got five minutes on. This will be something for the public. This is a good one for the public to uh, weigh in on too. Uh, when you get your opportunity, we'd really like to hear what you have to say. All right, we're moving on. We're at item number 13 right now. And just so you know, now uh, we will uh, prepare a plan for you. And then you will review it before we submit the application. Okay. okay. The application just so you know. Um, the application is, I think, uh, at the end of October is when the next. Okay. October 3rd. But, we go but to the next uh, quarter. <laughs> make sure. Which would end the, the end of December. Thank you. Right. Okay, Georgina, we're at uh, number 13, the wayfinding digital signage. Okay. 
So I have a little PowerPoint presentation for you all. Um, Wayfinding signs, digital signs, solar lighting, that has been a topic of interest for a while. Um, council recommended uh, to have it reassessed um, and take it back and try to come up with a uh, a reduce uh, a reduce a uh, smaller scale type of project that would be a, a little more feasible in the eyes of uh, the community and everybody else. So um, I've come up with a little plan for you guys to look at. And I've created a, with the limitations that we have on technology, I've created a, a little bit of a vision for you guys to see what could happen if we add certain things to our downtown. So for example, this, this specific slide has uh, the lighting, the solar lighting that I, that I brought up in, in our last meeting. Thank you. Um, that is currently owned by uh, business owners in that area, but we are asking them to relinquish their right to it. And we are actually bringing up a plan to put the entire picture, not just the, the top lighting, but the pole and the lighting, because we realize that there are there is a lot of missing pieces to it. And um, a lot of missing pictures altogether that have gone away. And so to be able to do a standard uh, all through that street, of the lighting fixtures and that it looks really, um, you know, uh, all aligned, uh, we would have to get uh, a, uh, a quote for the entire piece, not just the top. Uh, and if you remember in my last presentation, I brought up just the top picture and we were gonna try to retrofit the bottom, but, we went back to the um, to the provider, to the vendor, and asked, is there a way that you can provide the entire picture? And how much would that be? And it so happens it's less than retrofitting the pole. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I have this presentation based on putting the entire pole and picture all together, and I'll show you how much that's all gonna take uh, to do. And it's three three different projects, just so you have that that in your mind. Um, I've broken it down into one wayfinding, okay. Second, um, lighting fixtures, solar lighting fixtures for this area, and third, uh, the digital signage, which is not in this area, but I'll show you as we go along. So here, if you take a look at the at the street you can see that I've done a little bit of changes and I've incorporated certain things that are not there right now, but just so that you have a mental picture of what can happen in that area. For example, the parklet um, are these, these sections there that Mandy, thank you Mandy for noting that. Parklets are architectural design uh, sitting areas and they're usually uh, areas that are placed in like parking spaces, curbside, sidewalks, and it just creates an ambience for people to come and sit and socialize and, and create that walkability that we need in this downtown area. It not only benefits the, the, the community because it creates that walkability, but it also benefits the businesses because they are gonna have more traffic. So parklets is one of the ideas that will be implemented in the future. Uh, it's not a city expense. There are grants available for these parklets and they are available for business owners. So what I would recommend the city does is educating the community on these so that people know that they have these available and they can take advantage of it. And it will it will create the ambience that we want in the downtown area, but I only 
had it though, so that you have a mental picture of what the the visioning is. Um, and so I've also added some artwork to the uh, to the sidewalk there, uh, to some of the buildings, murals, and just to take you a little bit away from Denel, and if you go to Crystal River, for example, they have a really nice Main Street area mm -hmm. and a lot of murals all over the place. I don't know if you've seen that, but it's amazing. Um, and we we have a great art group within our city that we can really take advantage of and we're, we're not using them as much as we could. So this is all things that we can bring in and use our own community uh, citizenry to, to, to better this area. But if you can take a look at the wayfinding, how it incorporates into all of that by showing where the businesses are, by showing what is where, for example, if you if you go a little, uh, the slide before that. Before? Before. Yeah, right there, oh here. Uh, see, our fire station is right there. You see the wayfinding sign right in front of it. And it doesn't have to be in the same location. It's just to give you an idea. This is uh, kind of helping you locate where those businesses are. And it helps people when they're walking that street to know where they can go. So this is one way finding uh, locations. Uh, this one here on, on, the, on the right side is, is just, it's a mile marker. It's just telling you this is where the area is. The one before <laughs> that was a speed sign. That one on that side, on the left side, is the, it's just saying that you can't park there. You can't block the area. But if you see the design on the pole, it's, it's decorative, it's, it's historical. It brings the whole area together in the same vision. Um, so um, basically, see that this is this area here. I put a little bit of landscaping so that you know what little changes make big difference. But we gotta stop. We can start somewhere. If we if we do it baby steps, we'll get there. So my point is that if if we can't um, if we if we don't want to go and spend. $265,000, we don't have to. We can do it as a piecemeal and keep doing that. And it's it's ultimately your decision. I am just a staff member bringing ideas. <laughs> At the end of the day, you you can make that decision. But this is, this is uh, the visioning behind the wayfinding signage. And, and how it incorporates into what the area would look like once we bring in the wayfinding, once we bring in the lighting, once we bring in, you know, the art gallery people to, 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 to you know, to weigh in on, on how we can really change this area. And it's gonna create that attract, you know, it's gonna attract that. Uh, People to come to the area. So if you if you want to move forward a little more, I can show. That's the last of the wayfinding, Regina. That's the last of the wayfinding. Yeah. So um, the next slide is um, I community development went a little further. Um, no, go go to the survey. Oh. Um, community development went a little further and created two surveys. Um, one for wayfinding and one for um, digital signage because you have been asking for public involvement. And um, I know that there is a um, certain amount of people that come to our meetings and expose their their uh, opinion, but um, our, our, <laughs> our key is to, to incorporate everybody's opinion, not just one specific group. So we want to make sure that we that we tackle all that so that you guys are very well informed. And so um, this this surveys were uh, sent to our chamber 
and they were wonderful at this, uh, disseminating this, this survey. So they sent it to all the businesses, all the members of the chamber. Okay, and on the wayfinding, we got 76 surveys back. And the questions, as you can see, were very basic. I only, we, we only created five, six questions because we didn't want to board people, but <laughs> we wanted to make sure we got their, their, their input. So this one in particular is talking a little bit about wayfinding. It's saying here are the reasons your city needs wayfinding sign system. Municipal wayfinding sign system motivate residents and visitors towards higher engagement and increased daily spending through directional wayfinding signs, gateways and entrances, public art pieces, pedestrian map kiosks, and connected digital experience. Wayfinding systems help to reduce travel frustration, getting lost, finding parking, et cetera. That impact return uh, visits. People are gonna wanna come. Um, motivate traffic to enter retail areas and disperse to local businesses, increase per capita daily spending and drive economic development. And this, this is, this is uh, statistics based on uh, a mainstream <coughs> conference based on uh, cities all around. So this is what wayfinding do. And, and so we are kind of informing them and we asked them, do you agree with the above statement? We had 50% um, uh, of the entire group uh, strongly agreed. And as you can see the chart, that's most of, most of the input went into, they strongly agree with this uh, specific statement. And if you go to the second slide there, Mandy. The next one? Yes, please. Uh, this is part of the same survey. Other two questions. Do you feel that wayfinding signs are instrumental in redevelopment? And again, most people agreed that it was a great deal of importance. Uh, the third is, would you agree that city government can, can't be sheep about wayfinding? <laughs> and we had most people agree, strongly agree, actually. <laughs> Next, please. Do you think city of Danan appearance would improve this with this uh, with the wayfinding, and as you can see, I had <laughs> there was a huge amount of people that said yes. Do you agree that it would add character to the city? And most people agreed, strongly agreed that that yes, it would add character. Hmm. So um, we also sent it to uh, within our our database to uh, all city clerks around the area. We had 16 respondents, uh, responses from city clerks, um, eight don't have weight finding, eight do. And um, we had these, uh, the most, most of the responses said something like great idea, want idea, want idea to be introduced, have it and it's great tool and, and, and the planning. So these, these are cities around us that currently feel that it's it's a great idea. So next. Um, this is the survey that I did, that we did for the city hall digital board. Um, we did the same exact thing. The chamber uh, disseminated the surveys to all of their members. We had 36 responses. Uh, questions were, how important do you think having a digital board at City Hall is? We had most of the responses allocated at extremely important. Uh, the second question was, how much do you think the digital sign would improve information flow? Most responses were a great deal. Next. Uh, do you feel that it would be worth the money to have a quality digital board? And uh, most responses again went to yes. Uh, do you feel that having a digital sign at City Hall will encourage community in involvement? And that you can't see that, but that's what the question said. <laughs> most people said very lightly. And so next. And so this is um, this is just one quote for each of the projects, and this is the quote that community development is recommending 
you use. Um, so for example, this is the solar lighting. Um, they gave us a quote for 24 pictures. Uh, we only need about 16 within that street, but we have some pictures at our city hall parking lot, which can definitely need the, to be exchanged. Uh, so the total for 24 pictures is 15,120. 15,000. 15, yes. Uh, I have two quotes, and this falls under the $35,000 uh, bracket. So we don't have to bid for it. Next. Hmm. Uh, this is on wayfinding signage. There's a big difference in pricing. I'm sure you're going to love. <laughs> It, um, I uh, asked for um, quotes based on uh, signs just for the West Pennsylvania Avenue and the, the signage that is around City Hall. So the, the both, both of our and, and entrances on the, on the side here and the uh, sign inside City Hall. So uh, based on that uh, request, they provided me with a quote for $34,200. Um, this is just one quote, though, and on wayfinding, I'm still waiting on the second quote. Uh, the second quote is coming from uh, Custom Glass. I don't know if you guys recall their name, but it's one of the vendors that Ms. Kovic kindly suggested for us to... Oh, just forever? Yes for us to call. So they are, um, they have to subcontract the polls because they don't do that. They're a small company. Um, so they, they're they taking a little longer to get us a quote, but um, hopefully it's gonna come under the 35,000 bracket and that way we don't have to bid. Um, and then it will be your ultimate decision to say if you wanna go with one or the other. Next. And then the city uh, hall digital signage. Um, we have uh, two quotes. This is the one that staff is recommending. It's $34,995. Uh, and you heard it from the horse mouth <laughs> last uh, meeting. Um, how he explained what what the digital sign would would entail. So uh, based on recommendations from the public uh, through these surveys, based on our research, um, and and all the work that we've been putting into this, uh, including council's uh, recommendation, it is staff recommendation that we go with these three projects separately and um and 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 that you approve uh going forward with these with this quotes um i do uh, i do have to say that um it, it i mean once you approve it it's going to take a little bit of time for these to get done uh but hopefully, I mean, the, 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 as far as the lighting is concerned, I think they said six weeks for us to get the lighting ball, the lighting fixtures um, installment would have to be on the city, but they assured me that it's very easy to install. And we still have to account for the electrical to be cut or you know, canceled. Um, for, the, for the digital signage, um, they have, uh, they did one not too long ago, so the uh, you know for us to get it, it it won't be um, it will be more more than three months for sure. Um, and then wayfinding signs, um, I don't have a specific time frame because I that's the only one that I'm kind of hoping yeah. on because I want to see what Mr. you know Mr. Glenn can offer. Uh, from custom glass, but if you guys give me the okay, I can, I can, you know, we can make a decision on which one is is better for the city, um, as far as the city's interest. 
Um, I do have to say um, on the last meeting that Ms. Kovic brought um, a presentation for Smart Sign, and I reached out to, uh, to them and they sent an email, which I can share with you, said we don't, we don't do a wayfinding signage. Um, they, they only specialize on aluminum and aluminum is what we currently have. So they don't do any decorative signage. Okay, so just so you know. Um, and that will be all for my presentation. So on your corner. <laughs> Yes, go ahead. So if I did my math right real quick, thank God for cell phones and calculators. For all three projects, are we looking at 86,000? No, 68,000. For all three? For all three. Oh, apparently um, I didn't remember. Uh, no. I, I thought, I mean, 15, 34, and 34. Yes, yeah, so I did 35, 35, and yeah, 15. 14. Whatever I had added it and I didn't bring the, the final, so it, but it's it still around. So, and, and I again, I just rounded up Jan. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's around. So, yeah, something. okay, so I did because I did 35 and 35 for those last two, mm -hmm. and whatever I did for that one. So, so that's at 86,000 is for all three projects, and that would put oh, lighting yeah. mm -hmm. new lighting here in the. City Hall, and that's solar, right? Solar. And so, for, and correct me if I'm wrong, do we know just a guesstimate of how much we pay for electric to all those lights? Well, right now we're not paying anything for the lights over on well, 10. Well, we're not, we're not paying on West 10 because yeah. those are owned by the residents, but they're, they're, they're not, not being used. They're not being right. used at all. So, and, and so I guess there'd be a little savings for here at the city hall then i mean so maybe i'm thinking maybe a year year and a half we make our money back through the electric i'm just estimating two years i don't think we no. pay that much for these because they're the only things on those two yep. meters out there so the oh, biggest okay. expense is a 35 dollars a month for the meter okay. we're paying more for the meter than we are the electricity oh, okay you know i'm just saying so sure. Okay. Think, let me let me ask you a couple of questions. Sure. The the number of lights you're talking about that is to replace what lights? The number of lights is 24 lights in okay. total, 24 fixtures. And where are they going to go? They're going to go within West Penn and within City Hall. Okay. For now. So West Penn. Okay. And um, over your other. Other features here. Oh, the the, uh, the electronic sign. Are you still hoping to tear down the the sign that's out front um, and replace it with an electrical one? Is that your idea? No, no. That would be up to your decision. Wherever you want to have it. And there's a slide. Can you, Mandy? We kind of jumped and didn't show you, but there are two conceptual ideas on the digital signage, one that is on 41. And there you can see the signage and you can see the wayfinding sign um, right next to it. And don't don't mind the name on the address. That's not the address. <laughs> Remember this is <laughs> <laughs> street. <laughs> Just a sample. <laughs> so. Uh, that's, and then, that's an example of your signs that you have in mind. Right, the decorating so how many, signage. How many signs total? The decorating signage is going to be... How many and where will they be placed? One second. Nice presentation, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so there are, oh, Georgie, no, the four stop sign. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's right on the on the corner yeah, there, but it's very it. small. So I'm just gonna read it out to you guys. It's four stop signs with no golf cart uh, beyond this point and street directional, which have two blades on top. There are four uh, stop signs 
uh, which have four way um, four way signs on it, and no bulk part beyond this point, and directionals again uh, two blades on top. So it would have the two blades, the stop sign, and the no bulk part beyond this point, or the four way stop sign, whichever. Uh, one stop sign uh, with a street directional and off-site parking. Um, there's one stop sign and off-site parking way. Um, I'm sorry that I'm having a okay. difficult time reading it because it okay. is small. So, so you're answering the question. <laughs> so you're gonna focus the signs in the same area that you're putting the new lights. Right. So you have lights. New yeah, signs in that one area. Exactly. It's going to so be rather long. than spending the entire 265,000, you're kind of taking a portion of that money and kind of doing signage and lights in combination in a certain area. Sort of let us see what it's going to look like. Well, they're, they're, um, the, the monies are airmarked differently. Uh -huh. and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Jan. Mm -hmm. But they are uh, airmarked in the budget. But yes, it's it's gonna it's gonna bring together the whole street. It's it's only for West Penn Avenue. Okay, understood. And and the parking lot here. And the parking lot here. Yes. So the way signing sign, according to that picture that I just saw, where the neon sign was, mm -hmm. whatever, that would have a pretty way finding sign there as well. Yes. Say that three times fast, people. <laughs> um okay i got yeah. you so and that's out of the tip money that's out of cra fund. cra yes yeah. and um there's another sign another decorative sign on the corner the yes. other corner there's a stop sign there that's going to have a decorated sign it's um it's a it's also um it's also accounting for the exit and entrance sign to city hall because right now all we have is a metal sign. It will have that incorporated into it. So the whole the thirty four thousand is going to have that. It's going to have the yield sign, the no no boat no boat ramp. Um, no, there's one that says no parking on grass here. That's going to be a decorated sign as well. Um, so, We've got three of those no parking yeah. on the grass. So that's 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 part of the. Um, that's part of the quote. And one of them has the direction to the overflow parking. Yes. Mm, yeah, no, the, there's the stop there's one guess. yield, one do not enter, one exit, one entrance, one no parking on grass, um, and then two wayfinding double sided plates. Um, With all stop parking wayfinding. Yes, there's two. Right. With overflow, oh, okay. Directional, so because a lot of people don't see the overflow sign. You could paint yeah. on the side of that building over there, and then we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a mural. Um, so, Georgina, the the last, um, the one that the wayfinding and the last, that's the one where we would um, charge businesses thirty dollars a year, fifty a year, whatever it is that we would come up with. Yes. to have their business in that slot yes. in the historic district. Yes, they would have to pay for their their mark. Yes. Okay. Their mark. Thank you. So what's what do we do with this? So well for the wayfinding, Georgina has to wait to get the second quote before we can ask you to let allow yes. staff to move forward with one or the other. Mm -hmm. Um based on the so possibly we should wait till we have the whole you will probably have it for Monday because they were trying really hard to give it to me today. And so we could bring so, this back on Monday for a decision uh, if we have the second quote. We do have the two for the we have the two for the lighting, the lighting. and we have the two for the for the digital board. So we can we can definitely go forward on that one if you guys if you if you decide okay, to do well. that. Put it on the agenda and, and council can continue to talk about it. Then. Okay. Can I make one comment? Okay, yes. Yeah, I, I would like to uh, separate the uh, Pennsylvania signage from the digital uh, billboard for, that's um, 
would cost us over thirty thousand dollars. That's a heck of a lot of money for one sign. And also, There's I really wonder about the effectiveness. People are leaving town on forty-one, and then we have a pedestrian crosswalk there. You're going to distract people that are driving out of town to read a digital sign. You literally have to slow down or stop or whatever. Visualize this, okay? You have people leaving out of town. They're going 35 to 45 miles per hour. And then there's a crosswalk there that they're supposed to be paying attentive attention to that flashing light. I think it's just a really bad plan to put a digital board there. And I think they are highly ineffective. When you're driving, you do not, that running print, whatever stayed, stays on it, whether it be a running message or a stationary message, I don't think it's going to be that effective in informing people of what's going on at City Hall here. I think our website does that, does that very, very well, as well as our media, meaning our Riverland News and so on. I think that... So, Mandy, yeah. if, if we put it on the agenda as we just discussed, separated. but we want to it's separate, separated. We, it's, we, we can, it's, it's already separated. Already right. separated. So it's there are three projects. I mean, we can do that. Thank you. Um, um, just so that I may add to that, uh, there are it's separated into three projects, and based on um, citizenry input through these surveys, um, they they you know people really like the idea so just keep that in mind and you yeah. have two options you have the option of putting the digital sign on 41 and you have the option of putting the digital sign where the current sign is so that is an option you have and feel free to let us know what you want <laughs> okay georgina we we have to move on sure okay we have to move on great uh, presentation thank, thank you. you all right thank you, thank you. I, I know you put a lot of work into this uh, we're at we're in number 14, adoption of the Marion County Litter Ordinance 22-30, Mr. Hanna. Yes, sir. 60 seconds or less on this one. Uh, as you recall, at the last meeting, um, Chief McQuaig uh, provided you with uh, some information regarding one of uh, Marion County's endeavors to create a litter ordinance. They've done so. Uh, I have reviewed it and have a copy. Have spoken with uh, their council and uh, to clarify whether or not the county was requesting that the city just merely adopt a similar ordinance or whether the county wants to be involved in the enforcement. According to their council, the county is doing is just asking cities to adopt essentially the same tenets of that ordinance. So it's consistent throughout the county. Um, that ordinance is nearly finished. I will have that for you in October. It is the same as far as the regulations go and the penalties as uh, as the county. It just has had um, there been a number of changes that have been made to sync Donellan's current ordinances with that ordinance because Donellan does have a litter ordinance. It just uses different terminology. So okay. otherwise, I would have had it for you tonight, but it will be coming to you all shortly. All right. So. So, Chief, you can let uh, Commissioner Kirk, but we're getting ready to go on board, okay? Yes, sir. All right. Good man. I like him. All right. We go to number 15, and, and I will also be brief. There's no deep thing here. Number 15, City Council Code of Conduct. Uh, I just would like to address what's in our Code of Conduct. We already discussed it a couple years ago, but it's still sitting there, and I just want it to be clarified. On page six of our code of conduct, it says endorsement of candidates. Council, it's, this is what it says, straight to the point, easy to understand. Council members shall not actively endorse or campaign for other candidates for city council seats. When this was brought up previously, attorney Hand said that he felt very uncomfortable with the language of this, that this could infringe on First Amendment rights, that you should be able to get involved if you want. So I would believe those that put this code of conduct in originally probably were looking at it at least somewhat 
you're doing city business, for instance, if any of us were here at the dais right now and we are public, this is who we would like you to vote for. Or you know, while we're uh, conducting city business, uh, endorsing something. So uh, Mr. Hand, considering that we are now into the campaign and it's about ready to start, this either needs to be eliminated, it needs to be adjusted to what you said during city business. I feel very uncomfortable that this is just sitting here. It's, it's contrary to what we're doing. So what would you recommend? I can draft a perspective change via resolution and uh, have it before you on Monday. Okay. It's the, the actual provision itself is only one sentence. And uh, so changing it, like I said, is either elimination um, or restricting city business. And I think in previous council discussions, I think the original intent per conversation was to limit campaigns and not have campaigning speeches and so forth by council members sitting while during meetings. So that can all be, I can do that for you and have it on Monday. No doubt. And okay. if you I, want I to make any changes on the fly on Monday, we can do that too. We can private that. We can send it down. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, there are other things we can look at, uh, but not at this particular time. Okay. Now we're going to number 16. Uh, just a comment on our evaluations. City Council is tasked with two evaluations a year. One is of the city clerk and one is the chief of police. Um, Mandy, as, as the um, clerk, she does evaluations on her staff and everybody that works for her, but council has to work on police chief and give Mandy hers. Uh, one thing that happened that uh, I don't know what to do about it or if we can do anything about it, but when council turns in its evaluations and it's thought it out, and have turned them in and they've been tabulated and Mandy now presents the results to the council. Those results are the words of the council as a united body. And once that is announced to the council, at that time, the majority of the council should not have the ability to overrule what the evaluation process was. So we had a situation where there was an evaluation that did impact the merit increase. And there was a motion with a second and a vote. It was defeated three to two to undo the will of the council. I don't think that should be done. I think once this council has done its work, it's tabulated, and it's reported this is the will of the council, the majority should not have the ability to negate the will of, of the council. That's the whole idea of the evaluation. Here's the comment. Mr. Okay. Hand. All right, Mr. Dad. My only thing was, and that was an unusual circumstance in my opinion, the mayor's or uh, with the um chief's evaluation that time there were zeros given and from the council members they actually said well we didn't understand those questions so that's why we gave them a zero so mm -hmm. that to me was and it, in my opinion it was a a um it was an enormous situation when when council members don't do, I mean, that's why we go to the chief or we go to Mandy and we say, okay, so how many classes have you gone to? What does it mean when to serve and protect? You know, and like I think I've said, you know, does it mean, you, you know, just so there are things that we don't understand because I'm not sitting in there every day doing their job and I'm not micromanaging them as we're not supposed to. So that's why I I, I think that, you know, when, when we have council members that don't even do the evaluations, those are circumstances that are hurting that 
individual at no fault of their own. And I have seen enough governmental evaluations done by other agencies to know that that's not how this is done. So that's why I, and I agree with you, but I think also that the council members need to take, it, it would be just as bad as if you and I worked for IBM. I was like, yeah, I don't really know what you do. So I'm just gonna give you a zero because I didn't take the time to do my homework to get the job done. So- Well, I, 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 I see your point. That's why I think but, that was done this uh, time. We were all here and we, it wasn't that long ago. And the council member that gave out the report that was somewhat negative was sitting here when that challenge was made. And that particular council member did not say, I want to redo it or I want, I didn't understand it. In fact, that council member stood her ground and was part of the vote that made <clears throat> that nothing was changed. Well, I apparently just remembered it differently. So. so there was no, there was no, that person had every opportunity if they wanted to say, wait a second, I, I feel differently. But that person actually heard the complaints, was part of the discussion, was part of the vote and voted to keep it as it was. And that's, that was the three to two vote. That's fine. I'm just, I was just giving my opinion. So I don't, I, I just, I guess I just make the statement. I don't know if there's anything official to do about it other than that uh, once man report, the majority cannot overrule the minority. The minority is part of the process. If the minority is always overruled by the majority, the minority has no voice. Minority must have a voice and cannot be overruled by the majority. Okay, that's just what I wanted to say on that. Um, number 17, uh, Ms. Cubbage, travel expenses and education. Yes, I had a uh, conversation last week with uh, Georgina Sid. And as you may or may not know, she is uh, pursuing her certifications so she can be. Would you explain what exactly what stations you're pursuing? I'm um, I'm going to UCF for my master's degree in planning. So I am currently taking this is the second semester. Um, currently taking two classes. Uh, the two classes are uh, 15 weeks long, and um, for these specific classes, I have to go to class in person for seven times out of the 15 uh, weeks and, you know, go in person and in downtown Orlando. So it okay, takes so me Eugene about is, two hours, is, uh, right? Yeah. Driving an hour and 40 minutes, something like that from your home. Uh, it, it, with traffic, it's about two hours and 20 minutes. <laughs> right. yeah, 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 here. Right. For 14 weeks. And of course, this is for the benefit of, of the city of Denellen to have a a qualified city planner, which is something we should we should treasure actually considering what y'all went through with the hiring process to try to find one. We had someone commit that, no, I do not have the certification, but I promise you if I am hired, I will pursue it. And I believe the least that we could do is provide her with a city vehicle that's sitting out in the parking lot, taking up space, and a gas card from the city pay, help pay for this expense while she pays for it in her time and effort. So I'm asking council if we would consider letting Gina use a, one of our city of Denon vehicles and giving her a gas card to go to her 14 classes and come back. Thank you. <laughs> There anything, that's very nice. And that's something we can do. I'm all for it. Is there anything in our personnel manual that would is that a, is that an added benefit to her? I mean, I'm just trying to think outside the box. Is that an added benefit? And I would have to say our police department uses city vehicles to go to their trainings and uses a gas card. Well, what what's yes. So whenever we do like city authorized training. So if I'm going to go to Ocala for 
a records management seminar or something, yes, um, I would be allowed to take a city vehicle. Um, what's different about tuition reimbursement program, because the tuition reimbursement program is something different in the personnel manual, and it does not provide for transportation. It only provides for the reimbursement of the cost of tuition. So if we were going to go outside of that policy, because what Georgina is doing is through the tuition reimbursement program. It's not just like the city sending her for a training class here or training class there. We're paying her tuition for these classes on a scale. If she gets an A, she gets 100% of her tuition for that class. And she gets straight A. And she gets straight A, so she's great. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The only thing I can tell you that's a little bit different with Georgina um, is that this was part of her conditional offer um, that she would obtain this degree um, through the tuition reimbursement program um, in lieu of salary, not in addition to salary, if that makes sense. So if Jan just, hey, I want to go take some college classes to, you know, ramp up my financial person skills and Jan's going to go do that through the, the program that is established in the personnel manual would not provide for transportation. So Jan's getting her full salary and in addition to her full salary she's getting tuition reimbursement based on a scale in that class, right? So when Georgina came on we had a certain budget. So if that budget was $64,000 for that position, and George said during this fiscal year, and we, we mapped it out over a three year period, her schedule of classes that she needs to take to, to obtain this degree, her salary every year would be reduced by that amount. So that's what's different. It's not the traditional tuition reimbursement program. She is not getting tuition on top of what her full salary would be once she completes her degree. So once she completes her degree, then we're not paying for tuition. It will be whatever we've agreed to at that level in that third year. There's no. <laughs> no. It wasn't. So it's a stunt, Georgina, you've requested. Well, it would be great if you agreed to it. Yeah, I, I thought it was a great idea that Jen, Jen brought it up <laughs> so kindly. Um, I I did not request it, but I did mention that it was it was a strain. It it is a strain because uh, just just on the trip go, going there and back, it's half a tank of gas. <laughs> and you travel and, directly from home? No, I drive from here. here. Oh, okay. From here to 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 downtown uh, okay. UCF, it's uh, and back to my house. It's a, t a half tank of gas. Just doing that alone. So, so it's our it is a There's strain. reimbursement for mileage. Y yes, that's a good question. Well, we do. We can do mileage reimbursement, but like I said, because the the agreement that we have in in Georgina's conditional offer. Is specific to the tuition reimbursement program in the personnel manual. If you're going to do something outside of that and authorize an expense, it's got to be council. Council has to authorize it. I can't make that decision. Um, so, for instance, it's outside if, I was the gonna, if I was going to go to Orlando and take a weekend class there, and a city car was not available vehicle for whatever reason. I would drive my vehicle to Orlando and back and show you how many miles I put on my car and I would get reimbursed, correct? Right. Right? So why could it Because you're conducting simple? city business. Huh? So you're conducting could... city business. You're doing something on behalf of the city or something to that effect. But what I'm trying to explain so is... She's, this isn't actually city business. That's taking... like travel. That, that yeah. falls under the travel portion of the personnel policy. Her conditional offer specifically states that this is we're this is what we are doing and this is what you are agreeing to. Per this section of the personnel manual, 
that involves tuition reimbursement program. So if we're going to go outside of what we have agreed to, through, which is in her written conditional offer, which is written in the policy, it doesn't say anything in her conditional offer about paying travel expenses or mileage reimbursement for her courses taken through the tuition reimbursement program. So if we're going to do outside of the policy, council needs to authorize that. And just one more line. And, and I'm just kind of thinking things outside the box. If we were to allow her to take the car, our car, and because she's not on official city business, and God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, where would that put us liability purposes? Well, I understand it's insured, but as a it is energy, not, I mean, I'll contact the insurer. Because it's I, it, I, I don't think it would be any different than if I was taking the city car to go to Ocala to a meeting. No, I know that, but if she's not on official city business, but in the car, there's a difference. In my mind, I don't see that. Again, it's just a thought. So, okay. well, Jane can look into that. She can contact the insurance company tomorrow and have Thank an answer you. for you on before Monday. Sounds good. Can I ask a question? So when you're done with class, do you have to come back here or you go home? No, I go home. I finish um, classes from six to nine. So I finish <laughs> by the time I get home, it's almost 11. <laughs> and you get back so here you have a city vehicle, but she'll be going to Orlando <laughs> to well, she just, She would just drive the car home and then come back and her car be here to go. Mandy, why don't we staff just really. think about this and give us some recommendations if there is one. All right. I can give you recommendations, but if it's if it's something outside of a written policy, um, it's going to have to be something that you're going to have to approve. It's giving her a car. It's just not going to work because sometimes her car is going to be parked here. And well, she would have to leave here in a city vehicle, drive to Orlando, then go home, drive home, come yeah. back here the next morning, and then drive her car home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's not going to work. Mm -hmm. Can, can, that's one thing to do that once in a while, but to do that regularly, that would be. What is it, Georgina? Once a week? Once a week? It's, it's um, yeah, it would be once a week because um, the the first seven classes are on Tuesdays, and then once those are done, then I have to continue with the second class set of classes for another seven weeks on Thursdays. So yeah, once a week, pretty much. <laughs> And technically, um, because of the way her conditional offer is written, and Jan, you can ask this of the insurance company, it might be considered city business. If it is a condition of her employment to and obtain she, this degree, then she'll get reimbursed. And, and, and I'm just, I'm just trying to, I yeah. just want to make sure before we make a decision that we cover our, again, yeah. I'm trying to think outside the box. All right, it, we'll we'll get the we'll get the details and bring it, it back it, to you. It would seem to me if this is a portion of her original employment agreement, then this is city business. Mm -hmm. And therefore the EC uh, resolution to this is for her to turn in her mileage and her being reimbursed. Mm -hmm. That's very well mm -hmm. possibility. Just give us feedback on Monday. Okay. That makes more sense than switching yeah. vehicles around. So I certainly want to see the how, how much do you get per mile? You got fifty-six cents. No, I, 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 I think sixty-two. I thought it went up to sixty-two. Yeah, 62. I'd have to look into it. We have it. So, it's Georgina, that, that, that would that would help, right? If we if you were just reimbursed for your mileage. <laughs> Oh, my car was still <laughs> Where in your home? With the IRS mileage rate, it's supposed to cover wear and tear on the vehicle as well as gasoline. Yeah. That's what the, how the IRS sets that rate. It's 58 and a half cents per mile. Thank you. Oh. Well, and it uh, changes we'll every year. Where are we at with that, Mandy? Where, so, are we going to put that on, on, on Monday? Yeah, they're going to get back on Monday. Monday? Well, yeah, we'll put it on for Monday. Okay. Regular agenda, just to 
you know, you realize, Georgina, you're going to have to sign an employment contract with us. How how many years you have to work for us <laughs> after you get your degree? Hey, uh, this is very <laughs> detailed right. section. Get your yeah. degree and say thank you. <laughs> fun, but not that fun, right? <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to take the express espresso yeah. machine is going to be requiring. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we'll <clears throat> we'll dig into that a little deeper next going up. Council comments. Let's start with Miss Williams. Got any comments, Miss Williams? No, sir. Okay, Miss Hubbich. Okay. Vice Mayor. Um. No, oh, but I just have to ask, did anybody else almost lose their mind when they were trying to read that one article about Marion County, and it was Marion County, Texas, about the uh, military? The military. I couldn't open that because I don't have news okay, breaking well, my phone, but I did. I just, it was on a paper, though, that my husband brought home from his job. Okay, yeah, I just mm -hmm. making sure I wasn't the only one who was losing their mind about that. So. But that, that was the only comment I had. Hey, I have a couple. That are just nothing more than a comment. Um, we have talked about building a rope fence in our parking area here. And possibly, what I would recommend is if we're going to do it in this parking area, we ought to do it in our auxiliary parking area. Make that look nice too. If you want to see what it looks like, uh, Chris Anderson, who has purchased a piece of property on River, is it River Drive? Uh, Riverview, Riverview River Drive, which is right next to Nate Witt's, close to Nate Witt's uh, business. So you're going to have two businesses possibly side by side. He's put in rope fencing on his property. And it's spectacular. Uh, where you see it the most, where it's most visual, he has two ropes and they're those thick, like tanker ropes. And in areas off to the side, he has a single rope. And if, if you want to see how something really would look, take a drive back there. Just go take uh, go past where the uh, bingo hall is and go back in there and take a look at it. Oh. Um, the, uh, uh, the other thing I just wanted to ask is, has anybody heard what's going on with Soul Harbor Church as far as that school? Are they, is anything going on there? They're, I think they're in they're business, aren't they? Yeah, yeah they're, 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 they're in business. They're there every day. I've been meaning to go and get a tour. I haven't, I haven't even heard. Get a tour. So they're, they're ongoing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they, they're they, there every day. They walked in, you know, when I was on past it. All right. I'm well, going to go and take a I would, I'd love for them to come in sometime and give us a report on that. That would be nice. Okay, that's uh, my comment. Does everybody remember 9 11? I mean, um, okay, uh, we're now we're at number 19. Uh, Mr. Angel? Uh, yes, Council, I don't have anything report to report tonight specifically. Um, I have a number of projects that I'm coordinating with staff, and, and those will be coming before you, but uh, nothing to advise you on at this time. Okay, thank you. Before we go to public comment, I just want to uh, say one thing to staff. Uh, staff, it's pretty amazing the amount of work you put together for tonight's budget. Uh, I mean, tonight's uh, workshop. We we've had some uh, issues within the building, uh, people taking care of some uh, personal issues. So our staff has not been a full team for several weeks. And you were seamless. This, uh, workshop tonight was uh, evidence that everybody's working well together and everybody's covering and, and doing a little extra work. Um, the presentations that were made, the thoroughness of uh, what was presented to council by staff, mm -hmm. considering we have been operating uh, not at full speed, uh, is impressive, and I want to thank you for the work you've done. It was very good. Mandy, you should be very proud of them. They kind of stepped up big time. Yes, I did. I was a little nervous going into this meeting tonight when I saw 20 things right here, and I'm saying, oh boy, this could be interesting. So it's been a pleasant surprise. Okay. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, a nice, I guess, a nice 
it's a product. Okay, uh, we're at number 20. Uh, I got to con congratulate all of you that's hung in here that still wants to speak. So who wants to speak? Hello, Dave. Hi, Dave Porter, 11835 <laughs> East Blue Cove Drive. No way. <clears throat> yeah. I want to con congratulate the staff on their presentation and choosing Granigus. It's a, it is a quality software company. And <clears throat> how I got to it is from dealing with short-term rentals. So, so the most time intensive for staff members with short-term rentals is to try to find out who is advertising for short-term rentals that's not um, been um, registered with the city. Crystal River dealt with it and uh, they did a test and, and had their staff work for two full weeks just trying to track people down. And it's very time intensive because there's 50 to 60 sites and it's always changing. And nobody advertises rarely with their address. It's just pictures. Granigus has a module where they go into the databases of all these sites and give you a printout of all the short-term rentals that are being advertised in your city limits. Yeah. And it, it comes out as a report that's uh, it's legal for a uh, special magistrate. So I just suggest that you consider uh, utilizing that module because that would be a tremendous time saver for your staff if you move ahead with, with that ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good night. See? Yes, just wanted to let everybody know that we took Mary Ann home, okay. and uh, so she won't need a ride. And the friends of Miss Kenny probably need to make contact with her. Excuse me, Chief. Friends of Miss Kenny need to make contact with her. Oh, okay. Very good. Oh, Anyone else would like to speak? Bad. Yeah. Julianne. Julianne Mendoza, 11894 East Blue Cove Drive. Um, number of things. Um, starting with, um, I know Kathy Dunn had made comment about millage rate, and then there was some discussion, then Tim had made a clarification. I would just say, um, you know, in the hopes of, of keeping it under control, I think it's gonna impact not only citizens, but businesses and new small businesses will be negatively impacted by these tax increases as we try to bring them into our city. The two largest chunks of our budget go to staff compensation in the police department. And it's really the challenge of council to rein in costs and find the most responsible choices. So when, when I hear, Mandy dig her heels in when she says, well, actually, there was a, a contract about the educational thing, and, and I don't think mileage was included in that, and we continue to try to find ways around it. Well, could we give a car? Well, could we give a gas card? Well, could we do mileage? Well, could we? I just feel like, uh, as a taxpayer, I'm going to be asking, where's the money coming from? How does it fit into the budget? And how is it going to impact um, things like these costs that we're talking about? Next, I wanted to touch on the T-Mobile grant ideas. I was really pleased tonight to see the overhaul of the ideas, to have them listed out and have a discussion. I thought it was really super helpful. I loved all the ideas that were presented. And I also think that the, the train station is definitely a place for meeting and gathering. So I know um, the four choices did really focus on property, but I also see the train station as a great gathering place in our community. I thought the visuals presented by Georgina tonight um, to help us better understand wayfinding and other ideas were really spectacular. I think it really took us to a new level on trying to communicate to see what it is that we're talking about. But I, I really feel as though there's a lot of low hanging fruit um, and maintenance um, that we can take care of before signage um, that's, that will help put us in a better position. One of the um, survey comments, um, and I know when the PAC did a survey that we did provide full disclosure of every comment on the survey. And I think that that's really helpful to give perspective to the numbers as opposed to just seeing bar graphs. There was one comment that 
I think encapsulates what I'm, I'm thinking. And the, I don't know who it was. The commenter said online, wouldn't it make more sense to end the blight downtown? From the blighted houses across the street from the fire station, the dilapidated Dinkin Service Center and the foolish setbacks on 41, we could really use a, re a community redevelopment agency to purchase, refurbish and redevelop our downtown. How can you develop something if it's literally rotten and falling down around you? So I'm really a proponent to stop kicking the can down the, down the road when it comes to the digital sign. We've heard 10 reasons why the council doesn't agree with the digital sign. I'm all for kicking the can down the road on expensive signage to replace signs that we already have that are functional and um, come up with a, a larger plan to address the blight the codes and the low hanging fruit. I love the pictures of people meeting outside of the Cuban restaurant and the the parking, um, I can't remember the word, the so park benches, three minutes. parklets. They're amazing ideas, but when people are speeding by and the grass isn't mowed and everything's a mess, I just think we have more work to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, who else would like to speak? Tim. Tim Inskeep, 12140 Maple Street. Uh, everything Julianne just said, uh, plus, I don't know how a survey could be more slanted. What about the taxpayers? Which citizen that was referred to was on this survey? Zero. Um, so everybody that's getting ready to write a check here in the next couple months to pay for their taxes was no part of this survey whatsoever. Um, I just feel so insulted. I don't even know what to say. Um, it, my, my big thing I've got in big letters here is how about the taxpayers? When are we ever going to think about the taxpayers? It's just go down these rabbit holes, do this. Everything Julianne just mentioned, uh, we're going to have signs pointing to a bunch of dilapidated, broken buildings. Um, what are the taxpayers going to be getting in return for that? Just the same as we got from Greenlight, the same as we got from this dilapidated water company um, uh, that put us down there. And to sit there and say that um, uh, because one voice comes to this meeting, a group, okay, um, the group, which are the taxpayers, which are the citizens, which are the residents, were never included in the survey. How does that happen? How does somebody sit up here and, and put that kind of garbage out? Um, the, uh, the other thing I got is for the, um, uh, for the boat ramp, uh, charging, it got confusing to me whether the annual cost was going to be 4,500 or 1,200. Um, um, right. But the thing kept, the slide kept saying, um, well, we kept tossing around, uh, 12, Thousand for the first year, then forty five hundred. That's hot. That has nothing to do with boat ramp. You're 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 now talking about the website, Granicus, for twelve thousand dollars. Yes, you're right. Sorry, no, I'm upset. I'm telling you, um, there, there's no bones about State it. State Park was the least cost overall. <laughs> okay. For a boat launch program. Right, and I'm all for that one. I'm waiting for that one. Uh, one thing, I'd just like to mention that, and there's going to be a workshop on it, is when Citrus County start charged uh, we're going to charge for their boat ramps months in advance they put out signage just saying that hey Ed, okay gotcha so we got that covered uh i'm done i'm good um we need to be right with the citizens and the taxpayers though not these kind of garbage surveys that ain't right okay, okay. the surveys are garbage okay Tim, Tim, out the we got it um one thing that was just said as far as notifying the public, if we, once we kind of have an idea when this is going to happen, we don't have to wait till we have a contract signed. We can say it's happening Coming. after the, you know, right? Soon as that like, so we can get a chance. As soon as we execute a contract yeah. and commit out there. Yeah. You know, we can say it's coming, but if we don't have an executed contract and something happens, I think the public's just going to get confused. See, well, I guess what I'm saying is I'd like to give that warning out before we have everything ready to go. 
We right. Can. Well, we can. Once once we have the kiosks and everything there, let's start charging and we'll okay. warn them before that. Oh, okay. See what okay. I mean? Sure, sure. Well, we can. You know, <laughs> right. <in> <laughs> I mean, why, why do you have to have the kiosks there before you want budget for, right. for some kind of sign? I'd like to make that on that. We could put a sign out there as soon as the ordinance is passed. Yeah, let's make sure. Move forward. Okay. Quick comment. We'll see if yeah, anybody. I'd else. like to make a comment to. Uh, to the people that just spoke, and I understand where you're coming. However, you'd be looking at the bigger picture. Okay, what are we looking at when we go ahead and we quote beautify and start adding amenities to Pennsylvania Avenue where our shops, our investors are at? They're not going to stay here if they don't see a greater flow of people coming into our city who have been to other places and know what, how shall I say it, an enticing environment is that brings them here. And don't forget the bike trails coming in, okay? I saw bike racks in those pictures. I saw benches in those pictures, okay? Those, those okay. things, um, amenities Jan, that will enhance the commercial comment. value of those properties. Jan, you're, you're, this is public comment right now. It's not a debate and it's not Thank you. for you to give Thank rebuttal you. to public comment. All right, so come on. Okay, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Yes. Pretty young lady in the back. I can't remember your name, my apologies. Taylor Conrad. Oh. I just wrote it down. Oh. I don't know her. I just wrote it down. <laughs> I'll just say again. Um, Taylor Godwin, 97, 96, Southwest, 195th Circle. Can you speak a little louder? Oh, sure. Speak like a Boston school. school sure. Okay. Thank you. Just hold it. Okay. Oh, that works. There you go. Okay. So um, I also would like to add to um, the addition for the Ernie Mills Park. I thought that was a great idea. Um, although I am a bit biased as a musician, I do think it would be great to have the um, stage and have students um, be able to um, have a, a myriad of events like um, poetry, music, um, theater, things like that. And um, also, um, there is a scholarship that's available with the Boys and Girls Club. It's called the Hank Aaron Chasing the Dream Scholarship, and I'm going through and having all the students fill out um, the application because there is um, there are resources available um, for any of their endeavors. Like they want to pursue voice, music production, the guitar, piano. Um, I am a piano teacher, but um, it is a, a bit difficult for me to teach at the Boys and Girls Club as there is not a physical there's a keyboard but there's not a piano um so I was wondering I just had a question of like what else can I do to support my students growth um the scholarship is a great opportunity for them to have the instruments that they would like but um how can I do better to like foster their growth and um instead of inhibiting it I don't think I am, but um, without them having the the proper resources, it's difficult to do my job properly. So. Maybe some of the churches would let you use the, their pianos. Yes, they would. Okay. Okay, and I also had a question about the um, music resources in the education program. Um, I spoke with one of the students that was interested in the guitar program, and she said that there is not currently a class for guitar. Um, are the is a budget catered towards um, music education and we don't have anything to do with the school education program. Okay. We don't have anything to do with their budget. So that's the Mary County School budget. That's the room. Yeah, that's that's I mean I, I'm not trying to kick the can to somebody else's problem, but that's not our budget. Oh, okay. I understand. Okay, great. But some cities do run their school systems. Okay. And then I think I'm out of time. I don't want to take up too much time. So. Okay. Thank okay. you. Appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak? 
I want to thank everybody. Thank you, staff, for a job well done. We got through a lot of business. Motion to adjourn. See you later, alligator. Okay, I'll go